It's time to wake up with a nice cup of morning roast. Oh, yeah. Featuring Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky. Hey, well, I'm about that action, boss. Take it out! This is the morning roast on 95.7 The Game. Is that is that is that what we're doing here, Monte? Oh, baby! Wednesday morning. It's been a long week. The private show. It's been an exhausting week so far. You know, she's asking this 49 er situation. We're out here flexing, and we're talking about Shanahan. We're talking about Trey, and we're going to go through the Jimmy Garoppolo package today. Went through the Shanahan package yesterday. Oh. You know, we'll continue to talk about it. We'll continue to discuss Trey because we still both believe it was the wrong play call. It was malpractice to have your quarterback running between the tackles, going head up with linebackers. I don't care. I'm going to die on that hill. Well, we're going to get into Jimmy Garoppolo today. We are. But it's been such an exhausting week, and football fans are nuts. And I'm a, I'm a football fan, and I'm a nut. I've never been called so many names over this situation. It's unbelievable how many people are, and like, I'm Team Niners. We're both, whoever's playing for the Niners, whoever coaching for the Niners, you're going to root for the Niners. But the division within the fan base, screw you talking about Shanahan. <laughs> screw you talking about Trey Lance. Screw you talking about Jimmy Garoppolo. It has been an emotional roller coaster I as wish, we try to slowly turn the pace of Denver Broncos. I kind of wish that like this, you know, big segment of Niner fans who are also Warrior fans would embrace their four-time winning coach <laughs> as much as they do Shanahan. Or Bob Myers. I, I am convinced, whether you love Shanahan, hate him, or whatever, I'm convinced Shanahan could shoot a man point blank in the head <laughs> and Niner fans would be like, that's my coach though. Are you sure it was him? <laughs> they'll take a bullet for Shanahan. Or they'll say it's self-defense. <laughs> There's a lot of people who take a bullet for Shanahan. Yeah, that too. Probably. You know, like it's but wild. Before we get back into football, because I know we're football crazy, and that's where we are. It's football season, and we're going to talk football probably close to every single minute of every single day for the remainder of the season. For one little tiny moment, can we talk about the special thing that's going down in the Bronx? Aaron Judge, all rise. All Does rise. Be, you, Spadoni, you got, you've been you got ripping some the Giants all yeah. year about, like, they're just boring, and I agree with you. Yeah. The Yankees are not boring, and no. I'm not a Yankee fan. I hate the Yankees. I hate the Red Sox. I just, like, I probably lean more Yankees than I'm, I do Red Sox. I'm not going to lie. There's an American League team to root for, and I'm yeah. sorry, Oakland A's fans. Yeah. It's the Bronx Bombers. I, that new blue Yankee hat is iconic. I, I, I was rocking the Yankee hat. Well, you're kid. also a bandwagon jumper, I mean, so that doesn't no, surprise no, me, not, not really. You no, know? I had a White Sox hat. I love all different caps. Okay, Hove. But, but uh, <laughs> that new blue Yankee, oh, who but me? That but, was fire. But it does, like, the home run derby, or well, the home run derby, the home, home run, run chase, chase still means something to me. I know that we're in the era of swing and strike out 8,000 times, Joey Gallo. But, like, seriously, it means something to me. And to do it in a Yankee jersey and to get to 60 in a Yankee jersey at home in the ninth inning against the Pittsburgh Pirates when you're down like a zillion runs. He set the tone. It was incredible. So Stanton, can you play it? Yeah, Stanton walked it off. Stanton walked it off. But here's Aaron Judge's 60th home run, courtesy of John Sterling. The 3-1. Swung on it. There it goes. Deep left. It is high. It is far. It is gone. He's tied the babe. It's a judgy and blast. His 60th home run of the year. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right. There comes the judge. So he ties Babe Ruth for the most, for the second most in Yankee history. One behind Roger Maris for 61 uh, home runs. And this guy, I'm going to lose my fantasy baseball championship because the guy at first place Nobody right now cares. has Aaron Judge. I know nobody cares. But you talk about one of the greatest contract years of all time. This guy <laughs> bet home and on himself said, I'm going to say no to over $200 million. I'm going to be Cashman, real with you. screw you. Let's stop right there. Saying no to $200 million. This is in the NBA, right? Like the NBA, yeah. you see guys from time to time, they'll, they'll decline you know, right. $200 million because they'll get $280 right. million or whatever. Right. This is baseball. You could get hurt at any moment. Not, any moment. Not that you can't in basketball, but we've seen guys can still tear their Achilles or their, or their ACL and, and he, still get broke off And he's maxes. had injury issues. He's had injury issues, uh, Aaron Judge. But he bet on himself at the age of 30. And this guy 
has hit 316 so far this season. He's got 60 home runs and 128 RBIs. And he is literally carrying the Yankees on his freaking back. And the Yankees go on to win that game. Stan ends it with a grand slab. 60 home runs. This guy said no to 200 million? What's the price tag now? That means four? Half a billion? 600 million? Paige <laughs> Ottle is his, is his agent. Imagine how much money he's counting right now. Oh, I mean, they're he's like, basically Scarface at the you know counting money. Ah, right. oh, let's let's do it again. And do there's a again. little eyeball right, right, in the right, clock right. when they got the and, pop. and it's just him and Judge just counting money right no, now. I, I I'm feel changing like, dollar bills. That's I, all. I feel like it's. <laughs> I feel like I it's knew him. you like that. I, I, I got like, the best lawyer no, in Miami. Yeah, best I, lawyer my lawyer Miami. such a good lawyer. Right. But by tomorrow morning, you <laughs> are going to be looking for a job. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's a great part. That was a great part. They're sitting there counting money. They're pissed off. The guy pulls the gun out. The guy pulls the gun. So good. He's just like, oh, I don't care. Whatever. And it's he was so out of good. jail. And he was, he was out gone. Of jail. <laughs> just like that. Yeah. Front page of the Miami I'm Herald. I'm not going back into the camp. <laughs> but here's the other thing. Here's the other God, thing. God, I love Scarface. Yeah, I do love Scarface. I'm, I'm due to watch that over. I just uh, watched the other day. It's on Netflix. So I was thinking Bill Burr and the big fat black guy <laughs> in Breaking Bad when they're laying on the brick of money. That's Aaron Judge and his agent just laying <laughs> out all that money. Just uh, like, wow, what is it like to sit on $600 million? But Aaron Judge is having the most iconic contract years of all time. I know. Of all time, this guy bet on himself, and he's about to pass, surpass Roger Maris. Which is incredible. It's incredible. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. You know, the, the Roger Maris story, I wasn't as familiar with the nuances. Right. And have you seen that movie 61? Yeah, Bill Murray. That was on HBO. But, no, not Bill Murray. It was uh, no Billy Crystal. Was it Billy Crystal? Yeah, I don't know. It was another guy. And I but it was on the... HBO, right? Yes, it was and on HBO. And then, like, how Roger Maris is losing his hair. Well, Roger Maris was, was totally screwed and, up. And, 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 like, they weren't even pitching to him because they didn't yeah. want him to break the Death record. Threats. They wanted, Mickey, they wanted yeah. Mickey Mantle to break the record. Exactly. And then Mickey Mantle ended up taking the horse tranquilizer yep. and totally screwing himself up. All Directed the... by Billy Crystal. There That's you go. right. There yep. you go. Uh, but it was a fantastic movie. And, I, and I, whether it's 100% true or parts of it are true and some of it are myth and lore, I was unaware of a lot of the things that Roger Maris went through. You know, I just, yeah. I just didn't know. A lot of stress. Hell yeah. Well, and you're it, breaking Babe Ruth's record. Right. Babe is God. It'd be right. like someone breaking a Joe Montana record. Right. Think of how many people out here hated on Tom Brady or probably still hate on Tom Brady because right. he's not Joe. Right. right. You know what I mean? This is just natural. It makes total sense. So, I don't know. I, I, I love what Aaron Judge is doing. I just have such a hard time thinking that he's going to leave that environment. No. Nah, Seeing I, that stadium go crazy. And that was the other part. I miss when our Giants had moments like that. Remember Bonds? He'd get up there and just the click, 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 know, click of all the cameras. There's no way. There's no way Aaron Judge is leaving that. There for, can't at be. At least not any, for the Giants. And the Yankees not are the not Giants. letting him leave. The Yankees are going to give him a blank check and say, because they would riot out there in New York City. They would write by letting Aaron Judge go. And you know Steve Cohen, hell, he's not getting out of New York City. Steve Cohen would say, hey, just come across the street. Come to City Field. Come to Flushing, New York. Come to Queens. Here's $500 million. He's not getting out of the tri-state area. There's no chance Aaron Judge is leaving the East Coast. I don't care. Oh, he's from San Francisco. He's from around the area. He wants to come back home. How do we know that? How far How do we know that? Away? Like three hours? Yeah. Every, I love when everyone's like, that's three, his hometown hours? team. Yeah. He's probably equal distance to L.A. Right. He might he even probably be closer to L.A. Many Dodger games. I know. As many Giant games. And when you look at the, I don't care. Like Mark Willard always says, you know, guys are going to go where the money is. Is there a judge really going to take the Giants' money with everything going on with the Giants? You don't know who's going to be managing the team next year. And if it's Gabe Kapler, you think he's attracting free agents after this, the way the season has gone? Hell No. Hell no, so Aaron Judge leaving, ain't coming here. It's not just the money. The money is absolutely an element. And I agree with Mark. Yes, you have to <laughs> you have to be in the zone right. money wise. You also have to have a lineup. Right. <laughs> Look at 650. Oh, Comcast business sex line. Why would Judge leave New York and come to the Giants to dab with these bums? I'm not gonna go that far. Hopefully they'll say dead, they'll say RIP to the dab. But he's <clears> got I mean, like, come on. So here, here we go, real quick. You don't think that this might sway Aaron Judge? Today, this is 13 minutes ago, the San Francisco Giants, or however many, on Facebook, announced three-time World Series champ, seven-time All-Star, 
Buster Posey is now a member of the ownership group. Oh, wow. Do you think Buster Posey being part of the ownership group could help sway some free agents? That's a big time move. I actually love this move. That's a big time move. This is bigger than any of the personnel decisions that they've made over the last year. That's a big time move. You think Buster wants to lose? No. And I think he's going to have some say in the way they play. Guys, this philosophy stinks. <laughs> Guys, Farhan ain't it. Guys. This is a big move. This is a big time move. I'm loving this. If And look, 209, Comcast is a text line. Farhan's not going to pay for Judge. Well, Buster Posey's in the ownership group. He's going to say, go pay for Judge. Yeah. I go mean, get this dude. Buster was in a lineup where, I, God bless him, and we all love him, and he's a Wall of Fame guy. But there's a level up between Aaron Judge and Hunter Pence. The best guy that he batted around right. in his lineup in wow. his 10-year career with Buster was Hunter wow. Pence. Wow. And I, I love Hunter. That's not good enough. No, I mean, not- think about this. Hunter Pence left this lineup to come to the Giants. Right. Chase Utley, Jimmy Rawls, Ryan Howard. <laughs> Raul Lubadias. Uh, <laughs> He's a six hitter. <laughs> Raul Lubadias was a six guy. Listen to Carlos that core. Ruiz it was it, hitting bombs as your catcher. Phillies are great. Phillies are great. Man, all right, it's all good. And, you know, 925, there may be some validity to what you just said. This is like when Jay Z or Gina were part orders, just a face. Hey, we need a face. <laughs> you get Charles Johnson out of here. You need a face. Can you even point out if I gave you a lineup of I, random people? I wouldn't know what. Could you like. know? I couldn't point out Greg I, Johnson. No, I could you? Do that. No, absolutely not. Never seen him. Yeah, I mean, it, like as him. far as I'm concerned, Chris Cohan is Greg Johnson. Yeah, I, like I, I in terms know. of like I don't know who either of them is. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know at all. So that's big news. That's but big you news. need to have protection in the lineup. Like, there's one thing, and, and I, look, I remember when the A's made the big deal to swing Cespedes out of town and bring in Johnny Lester. Right. And I, just the way I view baseball, that's just, this is me. Everyone has their own perspectives. Getting an ace, very important. But I always look at when you take a center of the order guy, what that does to the two and three hitter, what that does to the five and six hitter. I mean, was it Damian Moss back then? Yeah, who, who, Damian are, Moss. who were the guys around Cespedes back then? Brandon it was Moss, Brandon Josh Moss, Donaldson. and Josh Donaldson. Okay. And they traded Cespedes, and Brandon Moss's numbers and Donaldson numbers went down the but that's, drain. But what happens is, and this is, you can ask Jeff Kent this, you can ask Moises Salou, ask anyone who batted in front or behind Barry Bonds. When you have a guy who's in the lineup who people fear like no other, right. it gives other guys in the no lineup doubt. great pitches to see because nobody wants to face you, like if you're Bonds or Judge, with someone That's on what base. Saying. That's what I'm saying. And if they do walk you, then the next guy, boom, you've got a duck on the pond. Well, the Giants need to go do everything they can to go get Aaron Judge. And finishing his second, you're going to die on me here, man? You're out here. You all right, man? I had a rice cake this morning with peanut butter, and I, you ever get like a little tiny piece stuck oh, in the back man. of your throat? You better sip that water, dog. Sorry, sip that water, doggy. I, uh, I had a really bad allergy headache this morning. Oh man, it's not and good. So, uh, no, but I, I feel well, great now. I tell you what, I've been Big up since steam shower. Yeah, I, I've been up since two thirty. I've been. Up, I couldn't sleep. I went to bed at around eight thirty. I couldn't sleep, and I woke up, and all I kept thinking about was the forty ers And I told Ed the last one. I said this Shanahan thing and the forty ers is driving me back. You know what? Crazy. You know why it's they call a, it, it that? Why? Because I heard if you eat the bat, you know what? The poop, it does make Drag you go you, crazy. Make you go crazy? Yeah. Well, I'm losing my marbles. And I'm exhausted. But I'm also very intrigued to see where the season goes. Because Jimmy Garoppolo's back, folks. Whether or not we wanted it. Whether or not we wanted him back in the locker room. Whether or not we wanted the Niners to restructure his deal or bring him back to back up Trey Lance. The fact is, he's the starting quarterback of the 49ers again. And it starts on Sunday Night Football against the Denver Broncos. Number 10 is back. And we've gone through the emotional roller coaster with Jimmy Garoppolo. I've loved him. I've hated him. I've wanted him out of town. I wanted him to be the franchise quarterback. I've gone through all stages of grief with Jimmy Garoppolo. And he's back. After all this, he is back. And now I'm thinking to myself, well, what should we expect from Jimmy Garoppolo? I mean, this, uh, this is the zillion dollar question. What? What? How did he even look on Sunday? Like, I'm watching a game back Sunday, and I don't, I'm like, okay, he looked okay. He looked like Jimmy, like RG3 said. He looked like Jimmy. But what should we expect? I, the relationship between him and Chip? Like, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, it's Wednesday. And I still can't believe Jimmy Garoppolo is the starting quarterback of the 49ers in 2022. It's, 
I can't sleep right now, Shasky. I'm thinking about this day and night. I can't sleep. Shit ahead. Garoppolo. Trey. Garoppolo's back. Like, what? It just doesn't even make sense to me. What to expect from Jimmy G? A grab bag. It's going to be a little good, a little bad. Jimmy Garoppolo is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Uh, okay, whatever. Like, like you're going to get a little bit of everything. That's what Jimmy G gives you. Yeah. The, the key is he's just got to stay healthy, right? Like, right. So this is a question that I keep seeing. Everyone's like, we don't know what Trey Lance is, but we know what Jimmy is. So let me pose you to the question. What is Jimmy Garoppolo? He's a quarterback who's going to get you in a right set. Are you going to say the W word? I'm not going to go there yet. He's a winner. No, 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 no. I'm not going to go there yet. He does keep you in football games. I feel like you're going to be in a lot of football games with Jimmy Garoppolo. He's going to make the right check downs, but he also is going to throw the yell no throw. The Jimmy yell no throw. And what do we say? Three to five times a game, the Jimmy yell no throw is going to happen. And we saw some inaccuracies on Sunday that nobody's talking about. But I'm going to give him a pass. I, I, no trade he can. Can you give him a pass, I'm please? giving him a pass. I'm the, okay. I haven't brought it up all week. I'm giving him a pass. I can't believe I'm the one defending Jimmy. I'm, I'm, not, I'm defending him, not too. Not that you're crushing him. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm giving him a pass. It's a tough situation to be Seeing in. Seeing him, uh, and again, I don't think people understand this. I went to practice with Sam many times, and we'd go to practice, and all the Niners are on the big field. And then there's stands, and then there's a tiny right. little field behind the stands. On the tiny little field behind the stands, right. in shorts and a t-shirt, Jimmy's throwing to guys that look like me and Bonte. Right. Okay? Well, shorter than Bonte, probably even shorter than me. But basically like a bunch of trainers, you know what I mean? Some, right. some apprentices. He did not practice with the team at all. Like, yep. at all. At all. So, I, I'm with you on, like, okay, he had a couple of throws that he didn't want back. I thought, all things considered, with that context, thought he looked pretty good. It was all right. It wasn't bad. I know. And look, the win word, yes, the Niners won but, a lot more with Jimmy Garoppolo's in the lineup. And Kyle Shanahan's record. It's he doesn't undeniable. 8-29 without Jimmy. You cannot deny that stuff. You cannot. But my thing is, like, oh, man, he can throw and Trey can't. How do we know Trey can't throw? He wasn't allowed to throw the damn football. Well, now we won't know. And now we won't know until 2023. So I don't even want to argue about it, but I'm with you. But, like, now we won't know. And, I like, mean, look, it feels like to me, it feels like to me, society as a whole has already declared that this is the this uh, this is the way. I don't know if you watch The Mandalorian, but this is the no, way. No, you know I don't watch Jimmy that. Garoppolo needs to be the quarterback. This roster needs to win right, right now. The players feel like they need to win right now. So, like, again, we, we can do all of the different measurements on Jimmy versus Trey, and this is a... It's all irrelevant. Jimmy's the quarterback. They need to move forward. This is the way. They need to keep him healthy. That t number one priority. It's not the reducing the Jimmy Ono throws. Right. It's empowering Jimmy Garoppolo and protecting him. Right. That's all this organization you, needs to worry about. Does Shanahan just need to let him go out there and quote unquote sling it like he was in 2017 See, when I'm, he really didn't know the playbook? So th there's a part of me that's like, yeah. Go around and, and feel good and sling it right. and, and do what Tua did. The other part of me is you also have to not overexpose the guy to getting hit. He's coming well, back off a major well, soldier. He's going to be in the pocket. So Bonte I doubt first row he got plastered. I know he got popped. He got popped, and he's going to get popped in the pocket. I know what you're saying. Don't want to see any RPOs with Jimmy Garoppolo. Well, that's, that's number one. I, I Throw mean, that play out the window. Yeah, burn, burn out that the playbook. Thing. I don't want to see Jimmy Garoppolo. You did it in the fourth quarter. David Bruce almost lost his marbles Monday talking. He wasn't the, the only play. one. <laughs> Me, Rocco, my cousin were sitting there like, Are, is he serious? I, I couldn't believe it. I just kind of chuckled. I chuckled. I said, Shed ahead, the A word, arrogant. Well, I was going to go S, stubborn. <laughs> or that. Are we, are we, are, is this are, Sesame Street? Are we just picking letters? <laughs> We're just picking letters. It calls Shed By the way, Shed it. I, did, I woke up at 2.30 in the morning. I can't sleep. Yeah. Can you imagine Kyle Shed hair right now? How much sleep is he getting right now? Uh, he looks stressed. He looks stressed. I'm stressed out. You know Can what you he's imagine probably Kyle doing? Shanahan right now? He's, he's probably... calling out fans. He said, I need to t educate you guys on the run game. Go watch Buffalo. So everybody goes and watch Buffalo and Allen runs the ball one time. I would love to recommend ease to him so they can get delivered to oh, the yeah. facility at 1.30 in the morning as he's studying RPOs around the league. Oh, my gosh. He looks stressed, dude. By the way, are you blown away? We're now three, four days in. Are you a little blown away by how many football expert X and O play callers there are out there? Oh, Just in general. It doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. Two things that have jumped the shark. <laughs> All 22 <laughs> and PFF. <laughs> oh, well, P let me just, before we go to break, <laughs> let, me, let me do something.
because PFF, and I did some videos for them a couple years ago for the draft. Uh-huh. And I was like, all right, I'll, you know what, PFF whatever. Bill and PFF John yeah, they're and PFF all, Maddie. Right, right. It's like Raider Rob, Raider Mike, Raider Dan, Raider Raider Josh. Like, it's got all, Raider Cody. You got all these different I Raider mean, dudes. According to PFF, the, the 49ers currently have the 1992 Dallas Cowboy <laughs> offensive line. I'm not sure if you know this. So, Eric they, Williams. Did you see the grade that Larry gave Lamar Allen, Jackson? Nate Newton. Did you see the grade that gave Lamar Jackson? No, what was it? It was like a 60th. It was like below average, right? Uh, all Lamar Jackson did. The guy who threw for a 75-yard touchdown the, and ran the, for a 75-yard touchdown. Threw for 318 yards. It was yeah. 20, 21 to 29, three touchdowns, nine rushes, 119 yards. And they graded him. What was the grade? And I just was like, PFF is dumb. <laughs> PFF is just, I basically just tweeted, PFF is dumb. I, I, I muted the word PFF. I swear to God, yesterday I muted the word PFF. PFF, for those that don't know, it's so, called Pro Football Focus, so, and it's a bunch of dweebs sitting in a room by themselves, not knowing exactly what the... What, you know what? I'll explain it on the other side. No, it, he had a 66.4 grade on PFF for his game against the Dolphins. Insanity, right? That's insane. Well, how, do you, how does he not get 100? How does he not get a A, 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 A? PFF. Get out of here, you nerds. I know Joe Montana has 12 touchdowns and zero hey, interceptions hey. in the Super Bowls that he competed in, but he's really a 58 PFF Raider. <laughs> hey, PFF, close your laptops. Turn off your computers. Don't do something. Get out the house. Dummies. It's coming up on a game sponsored by Ondeck Small Business Loans. More 49er talk. 888-957-9570. What should we expect? I'm going to try not Jimmy to Garoppolo. choke on my rice cake at the break. <laughs> yes, please. Get some water down your throat. Chelsea Messenger helping you beat the books. The Kansas City Chiefs are six and a half point favorites over the Indianapolis Colts this weekend. So far, it's been smooth sailing for the Chiefs. And during his career, Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes has absolutely dominated in the month of September. Mahomes is 13 and two in September with 48 touchdowns and only three interceptions. Maybe consider the Chiefs laying six and a half against a Colts team that just scored zero points last week against the Jags. You're the one who protects the flock, and that requires an eye for detail. Because when safety and well-being are on the line, it's the details that can save lives. Even when no one else is watching, you see everything. Granger gets you, and we're here for you. And all the ones who get it done with a wide range of safety products and solutions. Plus board-certified safety consultants here to answer your questions. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Brought to you by On Deck Small Business Loans. When you own a small business, sometimes you need funds fast. So go to OnDeck.com, America's largest online small business lender. On Deck makes it easy to apply in minutes. Apply for your loan today at OnDeck.com. Visit Friedman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill September 23rd through September 25th for their fall clearance sale event and take advantage of -of one-of-a-kind opportunities. Visit Friedman's Appliance fall clearance sale event for the best time to save on new appliances for your home. In this market, you'll find Fisher Investments is different than other money managers. Different how? Aren't we all just looking for the hottest stocks? Nope. We use diversified strategies to position our clients' portfolios for their long-term goals. You don't just provide cookie-cutter portfolios? No. We tailor our clients' portfolios to their goals and needs. But you still sell investments that generate high commissions for you, right? No, we don't sell commission-based products. We're a fiduciary, the highest standard of care for a financial advisor. It means we're obligated to act in our clients' best interest. So when do you make more money? Only when your clients make more money? Yep, we have one transparent management fee structured, so we do better when our clients do better. Sounds like you really look out for your clients. We do, because our priority is helping them achieve a comfortable retirement. That might be why most of our clients come from other money managers. Visit FisherInvestments.com to find out why investors like you switch to us. Fisher Investments. Clearly, different money management. Investments in securities involve the risk of loss. Have you considered walking through another door? I don't mean to pursue another opportunity, but upgrading a door in your home. Now, if you are in fact looking for another opportunity, Golden State Window and Door can provide you with plenty. You can create renewed function and design for use indoors and out. You'll find modern options like Marvin's Elevate In-Swing French Door. 
Barn Doors by Trustile or Anderson Big Doors that welcome in natural light. Golden State Window and Door features a variety of materials, sizes, and glass options. You can get inspired by the many possibilities when you visit GoldenStateLumber.com. Click on Virtual Tours and you'll discover beautifully planned displays of doors and windows of all kinds that will spark your imagination. Then, talk with our builder or designer to see what might be a good fit for your home. Serving the Bay Area for three generations. Golden State. When you succeed, we succeed. There's a reason Comcast Business powers more businesses than any other provider. Actually, there's a few. Comcast Business offers the fastest reliable network, the peace of mind that comes with Security Edge, helping to protect all your connected devices, and the most reliable 5G mobile network. Want me to keep going? I can. Whether your small business is starting or growing, you need Comcast Business. Technology solutions that put you ahead and give you serious savings. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. Get started with fast speeds and advanced security. Together for just $69.99 a month for 12 months with a two-year agreement. Or find out how to get up to a $650 prepaid card with a qualifying bundle. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. New 50 megabits per second internet and security edge customers only. Requires enrollment in EcoBill and AutoPay. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. Comcast Business Mobile utilizes the network with the most fruit metrics 5G data reliability wins in 1H 2022. Results may vary, not an endorsement. Kirby is your driveway mechanic. They bring the shop to you with brake replacements, oil changes, washes, and so much more. Get $50 off your first oil change with code OIL50 at Kirby.com. That's C-U-R-B-E-E.com and use code OIL50. MVP's bonus days are back at Lowe's. Right now, get a special BOGO offer from Bosch. Buy a select Bosch 18-volt bear tool. Get a battery free. Shop savings on all of our top pro items. Plus, MVP's earn up to three times bonus points on select products. Join today and redeem points for products designed to level up your business. Don't miss MVP's bonus days. Happening now at Lowe's. Pricing and offers subject to change at any time. Bonus points calculated before taxes and fees after applicable discounts, if any. Vowed through 923. Doug. Hey, listener. Welcome to Lemu's Karaoke Lounge, where Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need, and the music never stops. Hit it. There's an emu with a full-time job. His partner's Doug, but Lemu's the heartthrob. Grubs and worms, that's what Lemu eats. Gotta fuel up to save you money and hit the streets. Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Kevin Hart's Reality Check Tour is coming to Chase Center on October 1st. And 95.7 The Game has your tickets. Listen to Willard and Debs all this week around 10.30 for your chance to win. Now, back to the morning roast with Bonte and Shasky. All right, good morning to everybody out there. Sweat on the roadways. A little rain this morning. A little rain coming in to the studio, so drive safely if you're getting off your graveyard shift like my man downstairs in the lobby. Good morning to you. Good morning to everybody who's at work or getting ready for work. And this segment is presented by Tribark, has been partnering with independent restaurants in Northern California for over 55 years. Trimark brings you innovative product solutions to help your hospitality business thrive. Visit Trimark West. All right, so the weather, real quick. I always leave the windows open, um, and then my wife got a fan in the room. It's a game changer, right? You don't need air conditioning in San Francisco, but a fan, not bad, just because the air circulating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Humidifier, maybe? Yeah, well, especially when you got the dog. Sometimes Leo, you know, he's got the the, the the stink bombs. The breath. Yeah, Yeah, that too. Leo can let him loose. Yeah, you know, he's a Frenchie, so, you know, deadly and and very silent. Leo's wild. Yeah, he is. So uh, this morning, I woke up, and I'm like, God. It's like humid, and yet I look outside and it's like raining. So I left the house, and the all the floor, the streets are just totally wet. Right. By the time I got here, everything's dry. Yeah, no. it's like Florida weather. <laughs> yeah, I left uh, San Bruno, and it was like pouring. Got out to get my coffee. It was like, damn, this rain is so hard. I, you know, everybody's driving like fifty yeah. miles an hour on one on one. I'm like, I gotta get to work. Yeah. I'm smashing. Will through. you drive like eighty five? You know, yeah, I do. I can't help myself. I I really can't help myself. Sorry, CHP. I did see him yesterday on 280 South, and I slowed down hella fast, and they got off the freeway and po- popped somebody else. I was like, whoo. Do you have your NBC heavens. badge just waiting? 
I got the 95.7, the NBC. He pulls a Marcelo Zuna. Dude, Bonte Hill, dude, NBC Bay uh, Area. I, 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 true story, Shasky. I got pulled over when I first got to Charger, like two months in. I was coming on the Bay Bridge. It was night. Nobody was on the Bay Bridge. You know, you go through that tunnel on yeah. Treasure oh, Island. Yeah. And I'm flying. Yeah. I'm filling the myself. S-curve. Dude, oh, I'm filling myself. I'm like, Rrr! and I'm like, Slow man, this baby's him. going 90. And then I tried to slow it down. I speed it back up. And the CHP, burp, burp, blurt me, right? Yeah. Let I looked around. Up. I said, "Man, this is all bad." I could just speed the ticket too much into having this car. I threw out a credential. Oh, and they were like, "Where are you coming from, young man?" Oh, I was just at a practice, man. You know, late nights, man. And I'm flashing the credential. He does a quick little test. It's like, "All right, man, just slow it down, buddy. Get out of here." Second time I got pulled over, I was flying. <laughs> there's more. Just Wait, the second there's time. more. Just one more time. What? What it was south. I'm about to go on vacation. I'm filling myself. I'm bumping Larry yeah, June. Yeah. I'm filling You're it, already right? in vacation. I'm, dude, I'm in vacation, but I'm flying. Yeah. I get pulled was over. Was this the Steiny Guru and Bonte era? This was the BSG era. Okay. Definitely was the BSG uh, era. So you were blowing some steam blowing after some show, steam. After <laughs> arguing with Steiny. <laughs> Probably. Getting and, uh, two on one by Guru and Steiny. Guru, yeah. You always get double teamed by those two OGs, right? And <laughs> by the way, they molly Willard during a changeover Woo! yesterday. They molly Mark Willard, man. Mark Willard may want to take the day off. Look, I get pulled over in Brisbane, what it was south. And the guy, he pulled me over. I had to walk, roll the windows out because, uh-huh. you know, they're all tinted. Oh, I thought it was tits. the weed. Yeah, no, it wasn't high. I don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> I like a little crack, personally. Uh, so I, I pulled out the windows. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I pulled, rolled out the windows. Okay, a hell of a drug. So they, they run my plates. They check the ID. The CSP officer uh. comes back and he goes, hey, do you have any 95 70 game stickers? True story. Do you have any 95 70 game stickers? Now, I had no 95 70 gear on. Really? No, it, Ask me for some stickers. That's pretty sweet. And I was like, man, we don't have any stickers, but can you write your address down? I'll make sure to get you some some swag. That's the biggest lie you've ever told. <laughs> yeah, our promotion team was dead at that time. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was like, yeah, I got some swag for you. Give me your ideas. I like, nah, it's okay, man. Just take it easy, brother. Take it easy. And I was like, whew. Whew. 95-70 game saved you, boy. Now, Guru always name drops 95-70 oh, game. No. I don't do that. Well, I'm just throwing a credential. When he when he pulls the caddy up and he pulls over, like the fender comes falling off. They feel guilty. <laughs> Dude, he's on the new caddy. Is he? Yeah. He's oh, on the new caddy. I, I think he's been in the shop three times already. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, the caddy st- goes in the shop like every six weeks. I think it's time for a new car then, bud. Well, he got a new caddy, right, Spinoni? He got a new caddy, Guru. He got a new Cadillac. I don't think it's been in the shop yet, but... You know, I actually talked to Guru yesterday, and he said, "Oh, B, I gotta go. It's my wife's. It's our anniversary. What the hell are you talking to me for?" I don't know, Bonte. <laughs> the PSG era. What an era. It what was a time era. to be alive. It was Bonte, help me. I used right, to fill in on that show. Yeah, yeah you did you used to fill yeah. in. You did. You love filling in. You used to call our show. Yeah. Just call us. So uh, I know we're going to get back into football, and we're going to do a lot of stuff. You got uh, your top seven. Oh, King of the Hill's back. Oh, okay. Kill King of the Hill's back. The streets have been calling for it. And this is the power rankings of the, of the NFC. NFC. Uh, of the, the NFC. National Football Conference. Wow. Because remember, that's what we did. We didn't yeah. do the NFL. We did the National so, Football Conference. So what is there? There's uh, seven playoff seven teams Seven playoff now? teams, yep. Seven Interesting. playoff teams. So you're going to so give do me seven eight? rankings. No, we're just going to do seven. Seven. Okay. Number seven. And we're going to start from seven and go up to one. I like that. I'm excited for this. you would be surprised where I have the San Francisco 49ers on this list. Really? Baby. Oh, baby. Really? Oh, yes. King of the Hills back, baby. Everybody's been calling for it. They want King of the Hills. So we got the graphic ready to go. We got the rankings. We got everything going on. We'll do the NFC power rankings. And we'll get back to Jimmy Garoppolo because there's a lot here. Trick Dilfer spoke about Trey Lance. We're going to get into that. We got Mike Florio coming up at 8 o'clock. Mike Florio, dog. I said what I said. Mike Florio and I are best friends now. Oh, he's going to be strutting. What do you think he's going to say about the situation? Well, I mean, I just think that I honestly think he does not like Shannon. <laughs> That's what I honestly think. Well, a, hey, he's not the only one these I, days. I, I mean, you want to talk about somebody rooting against another individual? Aren't you not supposed to root in the press box? Can we get Mike Florio on Zoom? Can we try to get him on Zoom in his basement in West Virginia? Smoking weed? <laughs> Smoking weed. It's nothing wrong with a little weed. I didn't say it's listen, legal. Listen, it's legal. The first two weeks of the NFL season, weed sales are going up. All right? I need weed following this damn football team. We, we didn't even make it to week one. I was exhausted. Speaking of weed, did you see who made the cover of, of Forbes for the first time ever as a weed company? Burner. How incredible was that? Burner's never coming on the show. How incredible was that? We got to get him in studio. <laughs> Mark Willers already texted. Molly walked my ass. 
No, Mark got bodied yesterday during the changeover. <laughs> got bodied. Is that a dead body? <laughs> you know when Steiny is up in arms when he does the, don't you do that. Don't, don't you, you do, do, that. do that. That's disingenuous. <laughs> <laughs> if you missed it, go to the 95.7 The Game YouTube page you the and check the changeover. It might be the best part of this station it on a daily be. basis. <laughs> two guys off. constantly going at it. Doesn't know which, we don't know which two. <laughs> Gloves off. Shout out to Low Cold. Gloves off. All By right. the way, people are saying that you got white privilege when you deal with the CHP. It helps to be in a media game. <laughs> say that. Because <laughs> usually I'm, hey, I, I still do this. Whenever they pull me over, I roll the windows down and I put my hands out ASAP. I still do that. And they're like, how oh, no, you can put your hands back in. I'm going to give you 15 seconds. Is Aaron Judge the no doubt about it MVP of this year? Oh, yes, no doubt. Even though Shohei is a top five pitcher and hitter in the game? I don't give a damn. That's the story of the year. Otani. What is the Angels' record right now? Well, they're like eight billion out of it. They've been out of it since May. Yeah, I have a problem with giving an MVP award to a guy on the fourth place team. No, he can't fault. do that. He tried. He he's tried. Doing literally yeah. doing he's all having he can. good job, by good war, effort by war. Which I, I, again, we could f fight over war. Otani is a top five pitcher yeah, and a top it. five hitter. I don't care about war. Okay. Let me say okay. this. Okay. I'm just are asking. you war idiots who are I'm voting asking. for Otani? That's fine. But the Angels, nobody cares about the Angels. There's no pressure playing for the Angels. Yeah. Aaron Judge is in a contract year playing for the New York Yankees. And then he's about the to break history. Aaron Boone's got kicked he's out of the, every other game. He's the Triple Crown award exactly. winner right now. As of right now. As of right now. Uh, uh, come on. Aaron Judge is the MVP. I love how fired up you are over baseball. I, I, I Let's love get baseball. back into it. I want to do Tell King of the Hill. The, you know I love baseball. I know you do. Let's do King of the Hill. I love good baseball. Not the Giants. Wait, Mike Kosowski, about time you batted a base. How about Sean Jelly? How about Tyler Rogers in the third inning yesterday, oh huh? My God. What's he went from being your setup man to Sparks your third inning opener. Bake. <laughs> Full service baking. No compromise. It's kicking a hill next. If you own a business, this has been a bumpy ride. From pandemic to inflation, I'm sure you could use a break. If your business has five or more employees and survived COVID, you might be eligible to receive a payroll tax refund of up to $26,000 per employee. The challenge is getting your hands on it. Hi, I'm Howard Mackler, and that's why I founded GetRefunds.com to cut through the red tape and get you the money. The team of tax attorneys we have put together are highly trained in this little-known payroll tax refund program. We do all the work, charge not a dime up front, and simply share a percentage of the cash that we get for you. Businesses of all types can qualify, including those that took PPP, nonprofits, and even those that increases in sales. We have helped return over a billion dollars to businesses, and we can help you too. Just go to GetRefunds.com slash sports, click on Qualify Me, and answer a few questions. This payroll tax refund is only available for a limited period of time. Don't lose out on up to $26,000 per employee. Go to GetRefunds.com slash sports. That's GetRefunds.com slash sports. If you own a business, this has been a bumpy ride. From pandemic to inflation, I'm sure you could use a break. If your business has five or more employees and survived COVID, you may be eligible to receive a payroll tax refund of up to $26,000 per employee. The challenge is getting your hands on it. Hi, I'm Howard Mackler, and that's why I founded GetRefunds.com to cut through the red tape and get you the money. The team of tax attorneys we have put together are highly trained in this little-known payroll tax refund program. We do all the work, charge not a dime up front, and simply share a percentage of the cash that we get for you. Businesses of all types can qualify, including those that took PPP, nonprofits, and even those that had increases in sales. We have helped return over a billion dollars to businesses, and we can help you too. Just go to GetRefunds.com, click on Qualify Me, and answer a few questions. This payroll tax refund is only available for a limited period of time. Don't lose out on up to $26,000 per employee. Go to GetRefunds.com. That's GetRefunds.com. Gorgeous gaming, stunning streams, unbelievable bandwidth. It's another Lifestyles of Gagillionaires. Meet the AT&T Fiber customers winning at life with hyper gig speeds. Meet Gagillionaire Terry. While his love of streaming horror movies has him constantly on the edge of his seat, his internet bill won't give him a scare. Oh, don't go in there. I'm telling you. Because since Terry upgraded to AT&T Fiber with hyper gig speeds, he doesn't worry about data caps or equipment fees. Come on, man. The door's open for a reason. And best yet, he also doesn't stress about a price increase at 12 months. Because with the amazing Gagillionaire lifestyle comes an exquisite sense of tranquility. <laughs> Most of the time, live like a gagillionaire.
Get straightforward pricing with AT&T Fiber. Internet that upgrades everything. No data caps, no equipment fees, and no price increase in 12 months. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details. Hi, this is George with Left Coast Buyers. We buy properties all over California. If you own a house or an apartment building and want to sell it fast at a great price, call us at 925-434-5000. We can pay cash and close in as little as seven days. We buy properties in any condition, any price range, and can help you in any situation. Do you own a property that is run down and needs thousands of dollars in repairs? Are you out of time, money, and energy? Let us help. Are you looking for an easy way to get top dollar for your property and sell on your terms and timeline? Well, call Left Coast Buyers now at 925-434-5000. We can solve any problem. We buy divorce houses, inherited houses. We even buy vacant houses and abandoned houses. Do you have a tenant who hasn't paid rent? Are you behind on property taxes, mortgage payments, or even facing a foreclosure? Even if you're just nervous about capital gains or an upcoming recession, we've seen it all. So if you or someone you know owns a property and needs to sell, call Left Coast Buyers at 925-434-5000. That's 925-434-5000. Bart is turning 50 and we'd love to celebrate with you. Get 50% off your ride in honor of Bart's 50 years of service to the Bay Area when you pay with Clipper. That's 50% off Clipper Bart fares for the entire month of September. Add Clipper to your digital wallet for free. If you're eligible for other Clipper discounts like youth or senior fares, you get to take an additional 50% off those too. Details at bart.gov slash 50 years. That's bart.gov slash 50 years. Celebrate Bart's 50 years of service with us this September. Let's go. Your most valuable asset is your time. So why should buying a car eat up your whole day? At BMW of Fairfield, we value your time as much as you do. So once you've decided on your next car and how you want to buy it, we'll have you behind the wheel of your ultimate driving machine and on your way home within one hour. There is a better way. Experience it for yourself at BMW of Fairfield. One price, one person, one hour. Dell Technologies semi-annual sale has arrived and it's time to upgrade to the latest business technology. Save big on laptops and desktops with Windows 11 Pro. Plus get amazing deals on server, storage and cloud solutions as well as top work accessories including docks, monitors and more. Dell Technologies recommends Windows 11 Pro for business. Call a Dell Technologies advisor at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL for special business offers during our semi-annual sale. On the south side, we got six poly panels. And please, make sure they're flush. Kwame is converting everyone on the block to solar power. Please get a crew to wrap up 202 South Dwayne? He needs more certified installers hey, before the sun sets on his good, business team. boom. Well, let's pick up the pace. we got a long day. Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. We instantly connect you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. It's time to say goodnight to that check engine light with the free AutoZone Fix Finder service. It'll help troubleshoot the likely cause of your light for free. So you can drive with peace of mind. Restrictions apply. Get in the zone, AutoZone. On 95.7 The Game is brought to you by Beat the Street. Over tips to win a $5.6 million prize. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Oh my god! What's going on, Roasters? It's Brian Baldinger with the NFL Network, and you're listening to The Morning Roast with Bonte and Shasky on 95.7 The Game. All right, if you missed Baldy yesterday, he joined us at 7.30, as he does every single Tuesday. It's on YouTube. It's, awesome. it's on YouTube. Hey, B, it's on Twitch. We just cracked 10,000 followers on YouTube. Oh, wow. I want to get to 20,000. I want to get to 20,000. If you're when? not following by us the, right by now. The, by the first of the year, right? Yes, that's the goal. And here's the thing. If you want to see, you know practice footage, if you want to see stuff behind the scenes for the Warriors, you want to see some of the Steph Curry routine, we're going to start posting all of the Warrior stuff this year. So if you're a big-time Warrior fan, you want to subscribe to our YouTube yep. page because you're going to get a lot of the yep. behind-the-scenes stuff. If your kid is a basketball player and they want to replicate Clay Thompson's pregame routine or Steph Curry's, we're going to try to post all those things on there. So no if you're not, in, you got to subscribe to 95.7 The Game's YouTube page. Like us, love us, hate us, do whatever you want to do, but get there. Get on Twitch as well because we don't forget it about our Twitch nope. audience as well. There are day ones here on the morning. Russ, also the Comcast Business Tech site, 888-957-9570. Your thoughts on Jimmy Garoppolo starting at quarterback for the 49ers. What should their expectations be moving forward? 
Baldy yesterday said with us, and we're going to get to King of the Hill in just a second. Baldy said, it's full throttle. Actually, I'm going to just play it. You know, I've always said, and this is not a cliche, it's just a fact, is that it's hard to win games while you're developing a young quarterback. It just is. And so, you know, sometimes you can just be a Dak Prescott and come in day one, like you take over for Tony Romo, and you're the guy, and there isn't a big learning curve. But he had the league's best offense line in front of him. He had a great running game. Mm-hmm. And certain things that helped him not diminishing anything that Dak's accomplished. But it's hard, especially for a guy that's played as little as Trey has played. So, to your point, I feel the same way. I feel like, okay, it's full speed ahead right now. We don't have to develop. We don't have to have these growing pains. We've got a guy that's been to a championship game, been to a Super Bowl, won big yep. games on the road, all that stuff. Full speed ahead. Let's so, go. So I agree with the sentiment, and a lot of people have come in with this. Like, it's hard to win games, period. Just just stop right there. Right. Hard to win games hard in to the win NFL, games. No period. Doubt. Okay? It's exponentially harder to try to win with a young guy. We, we all agree there. No one yep. is saying it's easy. Yep. But... We also have to understand that there's the short term and then there's the long term, right? The long term is you're hoping that by the year's end, you have a better player. You're hoping that a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, the development that you put in that maybe sets you back in the first couple of weeks of of year one is totally moot by year five, right? Now, I know that's the long term view and you're going to say, Joe, they got Trent Williams and Debo. Right. The roster changed dramatically year to year. And when you swing as big as they did, they owe it not just to themselves, but to the player himself. The only way he's going to develop is with live bullets. I think we've all now finalized that. He's got to play. You can't sit on the sideline and develop. You need to develop in game. I don't think people understand the head coach is not over off to the side working with the backups to develop those guys. The only way you're going to get the repetitions and the practice and the work is being the number one and playing in real live games where guys can square you up. And I'm looking at this text here on a 408, and this has been driving me crazy, courtesy of the Comcast Business Text Line. Trey Lance clearly wasn't developed as a thrower enough, which is why Shanahan had no option but to run him. Number one, I don't subscribe to that. I He can't throw the ball. You drafted him because he could throw the ball. What did I send but, you but last he also, night? But he also, real quick, Shasky. Yeah, I'm sorry. He also, if he can't throw the ball, then that's on Kyle Shanahan. Well, both of them. It's on both it's of them. It's on both of them. But Trey Lance has worked. Them. But that's on you, Shanahan. I'm looking at you to develop this young man. This is the guy that you wanted. You've been complaining about, hey, I don't want Jimmy, I don't want Jimmy. You got your guy. And you go out there and you run him over 40-plus times. You run him 16 times last year against Arizona. You run him 13 times against Chicago. Don't give me this monsoon crap. It wasn't a monsoon until the fourth quarter. To the fourth quarter. First three quarters was fine. And you still ran this guy. You ran him when you had a full stable of backs. All right? Don't give me this that Trey can't throw the ball. We all watch practice. We all watch training camp. I heard none of that stuff going into the season. Trey can't throw the ball. Come on, man. What? It's a small sample size. How can how can we even determine through four games that Trey can't throw the ball? He made plenty of throws in those four games, Shasky. Plenty. Uh, look, I'm not going to sit here and try to uh, adjudicate with people, you know, who can do what and right. who saw what. I went to practice. I saw the guys. I saw them last year. I saw them again this year. I went every single day. In terms of throwing the football on the field, now it's practice and people can say, oh, it doesn't matter. Pads, no pads. Sam, I want you to hop on the the line with me because you were standing right next to me. Trey Lance was clearly the best thrower of the football at 49er camp, and it wasn't even close. Sam, am I lying when I say that? Oh, no, you're completely serious. It was just every ball. It was just launched right out of his arm. And, you know, now... Does that equate to automatic success in games? No, of course doesn't. not. No one's saying that. But, like, there's a maturation process. And if you're going to invest the amount of money that they invested in him, at some point they have to turn that card over and right. find out, is it a three or is this an ace of spades? Right. Or something in between. So, I don't know. Look, the, I, su- the sucky thing is we'll never know we'll about never know. this year. We don't know. And, and 650, I'm not going to go to the last part of what you said, but... Comcast Mr. Sexton, how do you how do we know Trey can't throw? That's where I'm at. Why the bleep will we draft him if he can't throw? Someone needs to be fired if Trey can't throw. Well, that's that- bad draft compensation. You moved up, you moved up in the draft and gave up an additional two first round picks and more picks to go get this guy. And he can't throw? If let's get and certify G, 415, this is where I'm at too. If he can't throw the ball, why was he playing? Why was he playing? I 
I, I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, that, but, that's... but here's the thing. I would say this It'd be before we move on, and, I'll, and I want to do King of the Hill. It just feels like to me you could take a, a look at every stop along the quarterback train, going back to the beginning, and you can question and say, mm, did you do it right in real time? Did mm. you do it right in terms of the long-term view? Whether it's not drafting a quarterback at the get-go. At the get 2017. Not empowering Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm. Not putting a good offensive line mm. around Jimmy Garoppolo. Not having enough weapons around. Mm. Um, not trusting him. Mm. Whether it's bringing in Trey Lance and picking mm. him over other people. Mm. Not developing him. Mm. Maybe keeping Jimmy around too long. Like mm. We could sit here and go back to 2017 and I can crack a hole in every single no, but 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 you could probably do that for every no, organization. You could do that before 2017. But, but you released Colin Kaepernick, but, 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 and you basically drafted Trey Lance, who a lot of people equate to Colin Kaepernick. You say he could be better than Kaepernick, but, he, but does a lot of the same things. That's where I'm going. You can critique every step of the way. Here's the reality. I don't want to go backwards right now. Today, no, I want to move forward, forward, and I want to embrace Jimmy Garoppolo Gotta get as the that quarterback. Out though, but, I hear you. I just think to me right now, they they they're they're gonna they get the guy they get the guy that apparently well, some of the players wanted maybe some of the coaches it sounds like which is a whole nother conversation yeah, I'd like to have with you yeah. in in about twenty yeah. minutes regarding the coaches but they get their opportunity and they can hopefully get into the playoffs because everybody's telling us this is a win now organization a win now team my pushback to that would always be and I said this during the Harbaugh era. A lot of players come and go. You flip the roster over 30, 35% mm -hmm. every year, and that's minimum, right? Right. If you get the quarterback right, that guy right. could be there for 10, 12 years. No doubt. 925, you guys are paid to be optimistic, so I get it, but he looks like a bust so far. And that's the problem. He was a number three overall pick, and that's another first-round pick that, as of now, hasn't panned out. And since 2017, when they had their picks, go back to Solomon Thomas and Ruben Foster. Go back to Michael McGlinchey. But it's too sure, early. Not, I know it's but too Ponte, early. Ponte, but Ponte. we know about Ruben Foster, Sullivan Thomas did not work out. You had two first-round picks. They're both gone. Gone. I mean, you just watched a guy who's the player of the week right now, right? The player of the week is Tua Tangovaloa. Yep. I still don't even know if Tua is good or not or great or something in they, between. At least I let him throw the ball. But my point is he's three years in, right? He's three full years in, right? And you're watching this guy, and he had the game of his life over the weekend and beat Lamar Jackson right. in, a, in a crazy game. I still don't know if he's the guy or not. I don't know if he's good or not. I have right. no idea. Now, everyone's going to point to Josh Allen, and I think that's so unfair. But... I sent you a montage last night of just year one and two oh, throws from well, Josh Allen. That, that was, it was like a five-minute montage of him just airmailing, well, skipping, throwing poles all over the place. It's funny because you sent it. I had retweeted it earlier in the day, that montage of Josh Allen throwing the ball his first three years. And, I mean, his first year. And it was bad. It was bad. Now what do we say about Josh Allen two years later? He's going on everybody's board as number one quarterback in fantasy football. A lot of people won't take any other player over Josh Allen right now. People will take him over Mahomes. That's how good he's developed. That's how good he's gotten as a quarterback. Trey Lance, I hope he can get there, but I just don't know. And my faith mm. in him being a great quarterback has been diminished with the way the head coach used him. Well, the other thing is that we're acting like the first two games is an indication of how he would have been used all year. I personally believe that as the year went on, there would be an evolution of the offense. I think we've forgotten in real time. We think, oh, Jimmy just slung it in 2019 at the beginning of the year. They protected Jimmy like crazy. Oh, they ran the ball like crazy. I mean, I think he threw like 20 oh, yeah, times, he, 21 he, times or whatever in the Tampa Bay game. He right? really didn't open it up until, I want to say, Halloween against Arizona. So that's what I'm saying. Now, no, maybe it would have been even more suppressed with Trey Lance for the first five, six, seven, right. eight weeks. But the hope was that as the year went on, you could stack some victories, slowly develop him in real time right. and then slowly open up the offense as it went going. So I want to give Shanahan the benefit of the doubt on that that I do believe there was a bigger picture at play and just because he was used one way at the beginning of the year that I didn't agree with doesn't mean that it would have been that way all year. Maybe. Maybe not. But right now, Shanahan Trey Lance. Trey Lance is on the shelf. 10 to 12 weeks his ankle will be healed but he's, he's going to be done for the year there's no way they're going to bring back Trey Lance to play you know what I would say about that because there's a lot of speculation about him right. returning in 10 to 12 he's weeks he's not returning Here, here's what I would say number one he needs to be fully healthy 
That's number one. Yeah. And I'm not going to rush him. We did this with Alex Smith. We rushed him back, and we they're ruined not, his shoulder. They're not, they're not gonna play I'm not saying that they're going to do that. I'm saying as a 49er fan, down. he needs to sit. And then then I assess where my team's at, and right. we will cross the bridge if and when. And let's see where Jimmy's at. Let's see where well, the team's at. That's where I'm winning? at today. We'll have that conversation well, well, when it's relevant. Well, today, we're not. Well, that's what I'm at today. And I said this at the top of the show, Shasky. It's the Garoppolo package. And I want to know what should we expect from Jimmy Garoppolo. In the minds of the fans, I'm very curious now because last week, last week the conversation was you have a young quarterback holding back a Super Bowl roster. Mm. I heard that over and over and over again. Okay, the young quarterback is now on the shelf. The young quarterback now is rehabbing a nursing at a broken ankle. He just had surgery Monday Monday morning. Now Jimmy Garoppolo's back. Shouldn't I now expect them to be, like Baldy said, full throttle, all gas, no brakes, let's go, let's go win this damn thing? And I know we had the conversation yesterday about Super Bowl aspirations and Super Bowl, Super Bowl or bus or whatnot. This core is not going to be, be together for too much longer. They've already hinted at that. Kittle, Juszczyk, Trent Williams, we've all hinted at that. Debo's only got a three-year deal. You know what I'm saying? This core is not going to be together forever. Yeah, but that, uh, agreed. That's also so, football. So it's also it's not, football. It's not exclusive it's to football. the Niners no, is what I'm but, saying. But, but, no, I, but I I'm talking about saying. the Niners. Yeah. The core. Yes. This core. Yeah. It's not going to be around a long time. The Rams core has been around for a long time. Cooper Cup's been there from day one with Sean McVay. Mm -hmm. All right? They're five, six years in now. Six years in. He's been there. Mm -hmm. they've, got, they've had a lot of their core guys. Aaron Donald. Our core guys, Kate Noter, they've got a lot of injury history. A lot of injury history. A lot, long list. Where's the expectations now with Jimmy back in the lineup? What should we expect now? Like, again, the question last week was, you got a young quarterback holding back a Super Bowl roster. Well, I'm looking at this weekend. Forget the big picture. I'm just looking at Denver this weekend. I have no idea what to expect, Monte. I, I, I don't. And it's I'm not, I'm not like, trying to yeah. be Mr. Like, pessimist. I'm saying that like, I legitimately don't know. What, you know, what, how much can Jimmy Garoppolo learn in three weeks of the new, the quote unquote new play? Like no, how no, many of the no, old no, no, players no, no, are they going to run? Or listen, no, but listen, I'm being no, honest. No, he needs to Baldi get up to speed. Us, he's got an injury with the Baldi, shoulder. He's, Baldi, he's coming back. I, uh, Who knows told where us, his health's at? The playbook's the same. He said it after the game. I'm comfortable. I know the system. I've been to the system since midway through 2017. All right. The play, I'm not going to, oh, the playbook. He's got to learn the playbook. He knows the playbook. Have any plays looked differently other than the quarterback well, powers? They did a they did a pistol play that was, and everyone was like, it's a totally new play. The concept was very similar. It's just the position of where the quarterback yeah, was. It's just a different formation. A, exactly. It's a different look to the defense. Which is Bill Walsh's staple. they run a lot of things that they've read since 2017. Mm -hmm. They just do it. They may run it in three by one. Trips right. Single, single wide receiver to the left. They may run it in double tight. They may run it in two by two four bases. Two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. It's the same stuff. So I don't want to hear that playbook stuff. By the way, you are listening to 95.7 The Game. KGMG FM and HG1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Download the Odyssey app and favorite 95.7 The Game for the best and most up-to-date sports coverage. And do not forget that you can also watch us every day on our YouTube and Twitch streams. Just log on to search 95.7 The Game. Let's do it before we forget. King of the Hill. It's back, baby. King of the Hill. <coughs> Sorry about that. You could edit that. My bad. Gather round, gather round, all you fanatics of sports. I was laughing. I had a skittle coming down my throat. It's time for Lord Bonte of House Hill to decree the finest eight football teams and all the NFC. For this is King of the Hill. Bonte, you are nobody, my dude. On 95.7 The Game. Ah, oh, it's good to hear from Dame in Oakland. And by the way, how about this, Shasky? I love this. Whenever we're critical of the 49ers, I've been getting this all week. What's that? Mike Mack on YouTube. I've been getting this all week. What? But I tell you, you should just say you're not a Niner fan anymore. Hey, Mike Mack, I have season tickets. <laughs> I need the Niners to win in case I want to sell some tickets. So the value does just go down the drain. All right? Stop it, you sensitive fans out there. There's a segment of sensitive fans that get on my nerves. Oh, my God, you said bad things about the head coach. You're not a Niner fan. Oh, my God, you're not Team Shanahan. We can't be critical of these guys. You guys ripped Steve Kerr and Bob Myers to shreds, and all they do is hang banners. Monte, you and me love each other, right? No doubt. I want to kill you on a daily basis. No doubt. The people you love the most are the ones that you scream at the hardest. Oh, well, I don't love Mike Mack. Yeah, I'm talking about in life. I so know. I love my teams, and Mike at Mack. times, I want to kill them. Right. You're not a Nainer fan no more. You're saying bad things about the quarterback. Shut up.
You should come see me and my dad play softball. He loves me. I love him. He's ready to kill me on a pitch-by-pitch moment. Please. Mike Mack. He don't like Shanahan. You're not a Niner fan no more. All right, let's get right into this. I All don't right. care about you beefing Spadotti. with somebody on YouTube. I'll beef with everybody now who's been calling me out. Get on YouTube and Number rattle Bontes. Number seven. Bontes. Rattle his cages. Number seven. We'll go up with the Minnesota Vikings. Whoa. Everybody's NFC favorite. Whoa. Kirk Cousins is 60, a pumpkin. 60 and two? Oh, my gosh. Go with 60 and two what? 60, 60 and two is his record. Oh, 60 of Mr. Mediocre. <laughs> what? Well, Shanahan's record isn't even in the five. I know, I know that. I know. So, anyway, uh, Minnesota, number seven. They're the seventh best team in the seventh NFC. Seventh best team in the NFC. Okay. We'll get the number six. <laughs> You're seventh. You're seventh. Because Kirk Cousins ain't winning nothing. Nothing important. All right, number six. Number six. The L.A. Rams, the defending oh. Super Bowl champs. They got blown out in week one against Buffalo. Also, also, the Rams, they went life and death with the Atlanta Falcons. Really? What's going on in L.A.? Big game for them this week against it, the Arizona Cardinals. Before you keep going, I want you to check out Unwind on West Portal. My homie Dino owns it. The best lamb chops in town. I'm not talking about the L.A. Lambs. I'm oh, talking okay. about lamb chops. All right. There Delicious. We there we go. There Number we go. five. The Number green. five. The Green Bay Packers. Oh, All right. Go Pack Go. Go Pack Go. They lost in week one of Minnesota, but I think they're going to win the North. And then they beat up on the Bears, which the Niners couldn't do in the quote-unquote monsoon. Packers, Aaron Rodgers, those young receivers starting to get better and better and better. And We're going to buy the kneecap off. Oh. Hey, hey, no, We're the Lions. Your other kneecap. Hey, you know, the Lions didn't make the list. I'm going to just say that right now. Spoiler alert. They yeah. didn't make the list. But you know what? The Packers, they got a defense. They got a defense. Yeah, two fifties. <laughs> I'm dope. Two venties. That right, guy's uh, done. All right. What is going on here? Number four. Number, Number four. four. The New York football giants. Brian Dable's got something cooking. I had the Panthers winning that the game. The New York Giants. Look, I had Brian. The, they go to Tennessee and win that game. Saquon looks back. Daniel Jones does it all to say he looks comparable. Looks like he can win a damn game with him now. And that Carolina game was a physical football game. That was a desperation game. And the New York Giants, from their faithful and met life, they got a big game on Monday night against the Cowboys. They could improve to three and no. Three and no. The New York Giants are number four. Wow. All right. Number three. Number, number three. three. This is going to be the shocker of a ball. Hey, Mike Mack. You think I'm not a Niner fan? Mike Mack. How about this, Mike Mack? I get the Niners at number three in the NFC. Ooh. Niners. That defense travels, baby. They've only given up 26 points. They shut out Geno Smith and DK back half of that offense. That defense, Hufanga, is flying around, and he's also delivering McDonald's to Trey Lance in the hospital room. That's my guy. Number 29 jerseys all over Levi's now. The Niners going to Denver, Colorado. This is a big Sunday night game. I can't wait to start breaking this down. I really can't. This is good. I watched the Broncos yesterday. That defense. Yeah. Ooh, a little baby. Bradley Chubb. It's going to be a physical football game on Sunday. You know me. I love a good body Phillips? back game. Phillips. Oh, man. Patrick Sertain, the second. I know. Nice. He's hurt. Oh! He might not play? Might not play. Oh. Spadoni, this break. is why you're the man. It's, that's a break for the Niners. All right. Who's number two? All right. Number, number two. two. Number two. Number two. You know, I can't stand Howard Eskin. I can't stand this fan base. I may not hate a fan base even more than Philly. And that's right, Philly Zoo. I know you're out there listening, Sean Singer. I hate the Eagles. I really hate you guys. Yeah. I, hit them up, the fan base. That a boy. But you know what? Taylor Hurst looks good. Taylor Hurst looks good. A.J. Sucks. Brown. How about Darius Slade Jr.? There was no gritty on Monday night Defensive for Justin Jefferson. Defensive player of the week? He, hey, there was no gritty in Philadelphia at the link. You had James Houghton sitting there. You had, who's my guy, Bradley Cooper in the suite. Oh. Silver Lighting Playbook. Great movie. Great, great Was movie. It? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I passed oh. on that. What? Yeah. That's an amazing. Hey, Spinotti, can you help your boy Tremendous out. Tremendous movie. Jennifer really? Lawrence, Robert De Niro. Great performance. Really? Great performance. Chris really? Tucker. Yep. De Niro great. actually had a good movie. Right. That's good movie. rare. Good movie. Well, All right. Mean, Godfather Part All right. 2. But. All right, here we go. <laughs> no, I'm not saying the last 20 years. Since <laughs> hey, Heat, he's hey, really look, been like a here character. Here we go. So. Here we go. Number one. Let's move it along. Number one. Number, number one. one. Number one. Yeah. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady's back at the top spot. That defense is flying around. They had Jimson, Jameis Winston seeing double. I mean, that defense is physical. They're hitting. They got the best linebacker. Best linebacker core is not in Santa Clara. It's in Tampa Bay. I'm sorry. White, Levante David, boom, bodying people. Whew, that was a big win for them. Now they play the Green Bay Packers in Tampa this Sunday. We got some big games this week. Big games in the NFL. You know what so I'm thinking about? Hill. You got up? Green Bay versus Tampa. I'm yeah. thinking about LaFleur not going for it in that game. Oh, the NFC Championship? Yeah. Wow. I can't unsee it. All right, there we go. So am I a Niner fan again? 
Huh? Look at everybody. The list is so controversial. That's right. the point of King of the Hill. Seven to one. Seven. Minnesota. I should, you know, I should cross them off and put the Cardinals in there or something like that because Kirk Cousins is a pumpkin. He stinks. <laughs> Shanahan loves them, though. Okay, okay. Uh, Just LA Rams, list. number six. <laughs> okay. Green Bay Packers, number five. <laughs> okay. New York Giants, number four. Wow, that's shocking. Niners, number three. Oh, is that shocking? Even though they're one and one. Hey, it is what it is, Okay, baby. keep going. Hey, high expectations for you. Super Bowl aspirations. Yeah. Let's go, Niners. Uh, Philadelphia, number two. Wow. Tampa Bay, number one. Interesting. And the fi- we've got the graphic up on the, the graphics YouTube up. page. You look like Biggie right there. That looks like the... Is the know, graphic already up? Yeah, you got a crown. Oh, and I love that graphic. And you're wearing like a khaki I do, I do. jacket. You're I do love it. By the way, phenomenal. that's Sloopy Floyd, man. He had me in this Earth, Wind, and Fire concert. Did you see that? I did see that, and it was what hilarious. What was that? People are memeing me all over the place. Meme Shasky. He's got a memeable face. Come on. King of the Hill. How you like that? What do you think? What do you think? I just can't believe I haven't seen Silver Lining Playbook. Everyone's telling me I got to see it. Yeah, how do you not see that movie? It's I watched movie. Batman for like the 75th time the last The new night. one? Yeah, it's awesome. The new one, it's dark. Dude, it's awesome. It's dark. The I Nirvana like it. Nirvana music? Yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah, no. Nah, it's, it's, I watched that on the way to it's Rome. It's so good. I watched that on the way to uh, yeah. Perry. That was and, pretty and good. And who's the girl? Is It's uh, the woman? Zoe Kravitz. Kravitz. Yeah. Lenny Kravitz's daughter. Yeah, She's she was, phenomenal she was as well. phenomenal. I watched that and Silver Lining Playbook on the way back from Rome. I can't believe that the penguin was what's his face. Come on. What's the guy's Colin name? Colin Farrell. Colin hey. Farrell. It looks nothing like him. Hey, the Rams stink right now. The Rams stink right now. Hey, Bonte, who do you think will be rolling down that hill in five weeks? I'll tell you who will be rolling down that hill. It may be the New York Giants, <laughs> and it may be the San Francisco 49ers. Because <laughs> that, that schedule gets tougher and tougher and tougher. I've got a big fight for who's going to go to the Chief game. Grandpa, Grandpa's on the inside track. I was talking about it with Anna yesterday. I can't go to the Chiefs game. You know that? Why not? I'll tell you on the other side. Well, maybe I'll take maybe, your tickets. Maybe, no, you will not. Sponsored by the <laughs> San Diego Tourism Authority. When you're happy and you know it in San Diego, there's no limit to how you can show it. Inland Sunshine, Coastline, and Outdoor Adventures. It's fire waves, a feel-good vibes. Play your trip today at SanDiego.org. Hey, Becky, what about this beat for your next song? <laughs> it's cool, but I'm into faster stuff lately. Like Xfinity that gives me beyond gig speeds. Got it. What about this, then? <laughs> It sounds powerful, just like Xfinity. Because its supersonic Wi-Fi has three times the bandwidth, you can connect hundreds of devices at once. <laughs> That's what I call power. Unbeatable internet from Xfinity. Made to do anything so you can do anything. Get the Xfinity Supersonic Bundle with unlimited gig speed internet, Wi-Fi equipment included, and a free 4K streaming box. All for $50 a month with a two-year internet rate guarantee and no annual contract when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash gig call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today limited time offer restrictions apply requires paperless billing and auto pay new gigabit extra internet customers only taxes and fees extra and subject to change Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet reduced speeds after 20 gigabytes wireless usage after 24 months regular rates apply requires compatible Xfinity gateway everything our farm our stand our pop-up shop it really all started when we discovered the benefits of local raw honey for our family and then we decided to turn it into a business. We were looking for something to help us get up and running. So we got the Chase Business Complete Banking Account. It's more than a bank account. It comes with Quick Accept, which lets us take card payments anytime, anywhere in the U.S. using the Chase mobile app. Plus, we get same-day deposits at no extra cost. For us, it's more than honey. It's about sharing a little sweetness with the world. Get the Chase Business Complete Banking Account with the essentials you need to help get your business going. Learn more at chase.com backslash business dash complete dash banking. Chase for business. Make more of what's yours. Quick Accept is not available in U.S. territories. Enrollment required. Usage subject to approval. Same day deposits available for payments before 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Sunday to Friday. Fees and rates apply for checking and processing. Limitations and restrictions apply. Participants compensated. Merchant services provided by Payment Tech LLC subsidiaries of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. How do you make the most of your land? Shaw does it behind the wheel of a John Deere 1025R compact tractor. And he can do just about anything because... I'll make the earth take the shape that I want it to take. But the Hubbards use their 1025R because... We really are trying to create this homestead. There are millions of ways to make the most of your land. How will you make the most of yours? Nothing runs like a deer. Get a one-series tractor for just $124 per month at your John Deere dealer today. For additional cost information, please call toll-free. 855-633-2315. You're the one who protects the flock, and that requires an eye for detail. Because when safety and well-being are on the line, it's the details that can save lives. Even when no one else is watching, you see everything. 
Granger gets you, and we're here for you, and all the ones who get it done with a wide range of safety products and solutions, plus board certified safety consultants here to answer your questions. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Pink Floyd's Roger Waters. This is not a drill. We're doing a show in the round. It's something new. I'll look forward to the challenge. Featuring his songs from the golden era of Pink Floyd. Friday and Saturday, September 23rd and 24th, Chase Center in San Francisco. Tickets on sale now at rogerwaters.com. This is not a drill. Produced by AEG Presents. If you owe back taxes to the IRS, have unfiled returns, or are worried about an audit, the IRS is hiring 87,000 new agents to address these very issues. That means if you need to get your tax problems resolved, now is the time to get started. I'm tax attorney Robert Goldstein, and my firm specializes in helping individuals and small businesses resolve their tax problems. We work to stop IRS and state seizures. We may be able to settle your tax debt for pennies on the dollar with an offer in compromise. We prepare your past due returns, even if you have no records, and represent you before the IRS and state in an audit. At the law offices of Robert Goldstein, the consultation is always free, and we have offices located throughout the Bay Area. To schedule your free consultation, call 1-888-TAX-EXIT. That's 888-T-A-X-E-X-I-T. 888-TAX-EXIT. And make us your last stop. Are you ready for your palm reading, my dear? Yeah, let's do this. I sense that you crave something. More reliable. Right. You know you deserve better and want out of a relationship. Yes, with my big name wireless carrier. You're who now? My big name wireless carrier. That's why I switched to Xfinity Mobile. Now I get unlimited with 5G for $30 per month on the most reliable 5G network. Uh, let's talk about your aura. It's so... And get this. They can even save you hundreds a year on your wireless bill over T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. Wow, that's actually really impressive. Yep, but you already knew that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I definitely saw this coming. Start seeing savings today. Switch to the fastest mobile service, Xfinity Mobile. Now with the best price on two lines of unlimited, just $30 a line per month. Switch today. Xfinity Internet required. Price comparison for two unlimited lines under available 5G pricing plans of top three carriers. Taxes and fees extra. Reduced speeds up to 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Most reliable based on root metrics. Use report. Comcast analysis of mobile Wi-Fi and cellular data from Ookla Speed Test Intelligence Q2 2022. Kevin Hart's reality check tour is coming to Chase Center on October 1st. And 95.7 The Game has your tickets. Listen to Willard and Debs all this week around 1030 for your chance to win. Now, back to the Morning Roast with Vontae and Shasky. Hey, B, we got a little baseball meetup this weekend, and, and we're going to get right back into football in a second. But if you're a baseball fan out there, um, and you're a Giants fan, A's fan, it really don't matter. Uh, a bunch of guys that uh, follow the Giants on Twitter, there's a group called Giants Chatter, Giants Cove, if you will. Um, we're all going to meet up 11 o'clock at Balboa Park. Just throw the ball around. Have a little fun, a little meetup before the season so ends. So I may do that because Chaz has been getting up. Baby Chaz has been getting up around 5.30. Okay. And I want to shout out the D.C. Stars, Pop Warner team. Pop Warner organization. They play at Jefferson High School, the Jefferson Grizzlies. And my buddy Nance P., my brother. Yeah. His son, Fat Fat, plays for the six and under team. Oh. He's out there playing corner, and he's playing on the line. And they won 18 nothing. Wow. Six and under team against the San Jose Hitman, right? Oh. And look, I you know how I am with names, man. I forget names left and right. Yeah. But I walk in, and right away there's, Marty Rose, baby. We better hear about the D.C. Stars. And I'm like, geez. Right? And took baby Chaz to the game. No She's pressure. Like, no pressure, right? Baby Chaz like, ball, ball. She's having a good time. She's running around. D.C. Stars and everybody there that supported her Marty Rose. Met a guy named Brett. I know that name. He went to Sacred Heart oh. Cathedral, class of 2014. Oh, uh, he baby. was like, I love what you and Shasky do. Oh, you guys you. do it for the culture. Uh, my big tongue and homie. I want to say it's. Uh, uh -oh. It starts with an N. Starts with an N. We took a selfie. That's my guy. He actually paid for me to get in because they they want to cash. And I was like, "Well, do you have Venmo?" So I was about to Venmo, and he was like, "No, no, I got." It. I was like, "Come on, man, I got you." And he's like, "No, no, no. What you guys do on the roast, you get me through my day." Oh. Him and his wife are listening right now. Please text me the name. French, you know who I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. He had two kids. 
played for the eight and under team uh-huh. and the ten and under team. Wow. And they were some beasts. They were some beasts. One's a linebacker. Mm. One's a back. I mean, DC Stars got something cooking. They were out there hitting. I grew up in the Excelsior. There's one thing I learned. Do not go head up with any of the Polynesians. No. They will run you over like a rhinoceros. They had a kid. Cause, so now they don't do, they don't do weight limits in pop water yeah, anymore. Yeah, used they to just be weights. 110 and Yeah, 110 yeah, because yeah, yeah. I played junior mids. Yeah, my brother played for right. the Seahawks. Oh, you played for the Seahawks? Yeah. Did he really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, way I didn't know when. that. Yeah. What year? This was before. Uh, pff, man, this is... Uh, what did he play? Pee Wee's or junior mids? Uh, I talk to my brother. He'll tell you. Well, I got to talk to Daily yeah, Boy Kimble, about that. They used to play at Kimball yeah, Park. Yeah, we practiced at Kimball Park. But they didn't have the 49ers out at Crocker when he no, was playing. No, no, it was they, just the Hawks. It was later. It was just the Hawks. Later in life. When I left Seahawks, then they had the 49ers yes. and they had the Brown Bombers. And then they had the San Bruno West Bay Rams or the something West like that. The West Bay Rams. Yeah. yeah, San Bruno Rams slash yeah. West Bay Rams. Now they got the Pacific Tiger Sharks. Yeah, I didn't even know DC that. the DC Stars. Yeah. That my little now. cousin Dave Vaughn yeah. played for San Bruno so mm-hmm. for years. So, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's good to see the kids playing. Let me say, they had a number 97 on the eight and under team. This kid, number 97, he was walking by uh-huh. from DC Stars. I said, okay, number 97. This kid may have been a buck 80. Oh, he's the Danny Almonte Dude. of uh, Pop nah, Warner? He, nah, he, he, they said he was legit. Nine <laughs> years old. This guy's playing D. Did he drive himself this, to the game? He was one of the captains. Right? <laughs> he was one of the captains, right? This big kid, number 97. He was one of the captains. He's got an NIL to deal to Alabama. Dude, he, they do the coin toss. Yeah. This poor kid. He was towering. It was like me looking down at you, Shasky. Oh, yeah? On the football field. Like that Derrick Henry photo from back in the from, day? Yeah, with Mark Ingram? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Where it looks like one guy is in eighth grade and the other guy is in the pros. Dude, dude, I'm telling you, this 97 kid was huge. And he was out there hitting. But they said, you know, stamina is an issue right now for the young uh, man. So he was out there two snaps, boom. Two snap guy. So anyway, is an issue. So... Shout out to the DC Stars. Nice. Shout out to the San Jose Hitman. Shout out to the Oakland Dynamites. Shout out to the Brown Bombers. Nice. Shout out to all the Pop Warner organizations out there. They really do a good job, though. I love it. The parents, they put on the snack bar. They had the barbecue rolling on. There's some good things going on in Jefferson. So it will not be the last time I see the DC Stars play. Very cool. Pop Warner. There we so go. So I wanted to get into something. I know we want to talk 49ers. And we'll get here. to the calls in a second, too. We will. Uh, but. There's just something that I noticed yesterday, and I, I think Mark Willard uh, has been referencing this Mike Silver article in the Chronicle Uh-oh. Sunday night. By the way, Richmond Steelers, Darius Bright, they mess with the Richmond Steelers. Uh-oh. We'll see about that, Richmond Steelers. Well, I'm glad you squeezed that in. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I, I, I read the article from Mike Silver um, regarding just the 49ers in the aftermath. This is in the locker room after the game on Sunday night. Right. Uh, and he spoke on the record and off the record to players, uh, and then off the record to some coaches as well. Now, I don't know how many people this is. I don't know if this is one, two, three people, 15, 25. I don't know. And I don't know how many people feel this way. I, I'm not here to, to, to adjudicate or calculate how many people in the locker room or on the staff right now are feeling one way or the other. I did find it interesting that I guess the players I expect, and, and I expect coaches to have differing opinions from the head coach, but in the aftermath of the kid going down in the locker room, for everybody to universally immediately pivot right. to we're a better team now with Jimmy Garoppolo, it's not that it's true. It might be true. It probably is true. But to say it so quickly in the locker room, I got a little worried, and, and where I'm going at with this is that Part of why Kyle Shanahan got brought in to the 49ers, if, if you can peel your head back and go back to where we were in 2016, 2017, mm-hmm. when he got brought in. The number one reason that the 49er job was a complete right. disaster, it wasn't just on field. The front office, the coach, the coaching staff, there were leaks galore. They were people that were insubordinate to one another and backstabbing each other and leaking things to Jay Glazer, to Adam uh, Schefter, you name it. Which is why when Shanahan got hired and they didn't leak the John Lynch information because remember John Lynch got hired as GM two weeks after Shanahan basically had the job as head coach of the 49ers. And one of the things was they didn't want Shanahan and Lynch basically wanted to test York and company to see if they would leak any information. Because remember it came out of nowhere on a Sunday night. Came out of nowhere. It was like, whoa, John Lynch, the GM, huh? And nobody had an inkling of it. But they were they basically said this when they got hired. Like, we wanted to see how they would react to it. Can yeah. they keep information close to the vest? That's been a staple for the Shanahan and Lynch era up until this point. Absolutely. And it does feel like the first couple of years, 
everything was airtight. You know, it, it was really airtight. And I want to give them credit for this. Like, everything was on the inside of that organization. Mm -hmm. They would make a move. For example, the Jimmy Garoppolo trade in year one. Nobody saw that coming. Nobody saw it coming. All right? They made and, a lot of different shrewd you know moves what? that kinda, nobody saw coming. Kind of like Jimmy Garoppolo sticking around and being a backup to start the season. They got Jimmy Garoppolo handed to them. Well, be, if we go back to 2017, just a little yeah, tidbit yeah, there. Yeah. Belichick basically was like, I got to move Jimmy. You guys want Jimmy? Yeah, well, Lynch <laughs> wanted Brady first. Right. Like, he asked him, was like, yo, you want to trade Brady? Belichick was like, no, Belichick I'll, give laughed you, at him. I'll give you Jimmy G. Right. So I guess where I'm going at with this entire thing is that, again, it's not the end of the world. I just have a little red flag, a tiny little red flag that I'm sticking on this situation because it feels like there's been a lot of drip, 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 drip leaks all offseason, whether it's... Doubting Trey Lance, whether it's the Jimmy Garoppolo thing, it just feels like to me when I saw all the different offensive staff leaving, some right. leaving for a new job, some getting you know fired. Basically, right. you know, Rick Scangarello was fired, right, straight up. Fired. They brought in a bunch of new people. The fact, whether it's a holdover or a new hire, the fact that a coach, and I'm I'm going to go with Michael Silver's word here. People can disagree. Well, on, Benjamin Albright's going to join us Friday. Okay, but and he's going to disagree with the report. I can tell you that right now. I saw him if on the Twitter report last night. Is true is what I'm saying, and I I kind of believe it to be true. I just don't think that he's very credible. Like, whether I like Michael Silver and I, it's irrelevant. I believe that most of his reporting is right. credible. Okay, and and you know what? In one of the videos, I did see Silver walking off with Garoppolo. Cam Emmett had a video, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Silver walking out with Garoppolo, and he's kind of lingering around. And we all have inklings on who's talking and who's not talking. But I expect people, because even in our profession or any profession, oh, yeah, there's a lot of gossip. talk like, that guy's not a good journeyman. Right. That guy's not a good lawyer. That guy's not a good police officer. Like, well, pick the profession that you're in, right? People have their own feelings and guys gossip. So that's not, neither here nor there. But the fact that even off the record, a coach immediately in that locker room would say something to, to Silver, I just have it red flagged. And then the other part of this is like, guys, can we let the dust settle? Before we, we we take a celebration now that part and I'm not and I get it it's a reality if it is a coach it's a reality but man it, it just felt like can we have a little tact I yeah, guess no, is the way that no, I'm going with there that. was no tact in terms of lot, like just uh, a little bit of respect for the fallen I, guy that just went down I'm not gonna lie to you I've been watching a lot of Kyle Uzcheck interviews and it's it rubs me the wrong way on how open he is about oh man you know having Jimmy and you know that was Niner football when he said that I was just like. Damn, did you really have Trey's back? I know you're going out there playing hard, well, he's but did you the, really believe in Trey? I would you know? say this. For him specifically, let, let me try to, not to defend him, but let me explain maybe his point of view. If you're going to run pistol, I'm probably not going to be out there right. as a fullback very often. So you're not happy. You're not playing. But if you run a more traditional offense, right. I'm going to play which, more. Which, which, it makes sense. Which, well, I don't know why Shanahan wasn't doing that. Why don't you run the traditional offense? Why don't you just run and say, hey, Trey, here's our offense. Yeah. I drafted you to learn this offense. Yes. I'm not adjusting like, oh, man, Trey can't do this. So I'm going to run pistol. I don't believe any of that stuff. I don't. But the leakage. And Silver's now had two stories. The ghosting story. Yeah. And now this story right after the game. And how player and coaches, whoever the coach that said that, shame on them. And I would be irate if I was shedding well, that, this is I would be I'm, irate. This is where I'm going. This isn't it. I don't want to go as far as say insubordination and the guy needs to be, No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's a really bad look. And this is why. It's not the end of the world. They can still overcome all of right. these different things. But you have to admit, as a casual observer, even if you aren't a Niner fan, it is a bad look. And there's a lot of leaks. I, do you think Jed's leaking stuff again? No. You no, I Parag? don't think that's fair. And I'm not saying that you're accusing him. No, I'm not accusing him. No, at all. I'm, I'm not, not saying anything. But just silver right these columns. And Benjamin Bell, we're going to talk to him Friday. Do they feel buttoned up, I guess, is the question. It does not feel buttoned and that's up. It feels like this at. whole, it feels like Trey going. was set up to where it was like, man, the weight of the world is on his shoulders. And think about just it the It felt week. like a no-win La situation Last now that we week. have a little bit of context. Well, well, I said this going to Chicago. Chicago is a lose-lose situation. You win that game, well, it's just the Bears. You lose that game, oh, Trey's not ready. Now it's time to play Garoppolo. That conversation started moments after their week one loss. Moments people couldn't wait to text, type. It's Jimmy's team. Go play Jimmy. You're wasting the Super Bowl roster. And just think about the week that was for Trey Lance last week. The week that was. Ending with the strip club video. From the summer. From from Mike Martz to Michael Lombardi to the Silver Reports 
to the strip club video getting leaked, and then what happened on Sunday on the second possession of the game. I would say that there's a lot that they, the Niners themselves can't control. Like, they can't control the content that Mike Martz is putting out. control the or message. Lombardi or any of those guys. But, but the fact that in the locker room, everybody's saying this stuff, even if it's true, even if it's true, I'm not saying it's wrong. People well, are entitled to have their opinions. Well, there's times I haven't had faith in certain managers, mm -hmm. right? I get that. But to say it that day well, in the locker room, well, to me, all I, I just read a tiny little red no, flag. No, That's well, all I'm saying. You go watch those pressers. Not Shanahan, but like the use check and the Jimmy. And there was a lot of, there was a lot of jubilation. Because I get it, they won the football game. But I remember being in the locker room up in Toronto uh -huh. with Ken, Kevin Durant tours Achilles. And this is a finals game. This is a they, finals game that they won. <laughs> that they won. That they won. Yeah. And all they could think about was Kevin Durant, Steph, Livingston, Iguodala. And everyone knew the he mood, was probably leaving. The, the mood was, they were all despondent. Well, you it was like, yeah, we won. Soldier. It's cool. Yeah. But our brother went down. Exactly. The mood, and they were somber. And I've been in a lot of other locker rooms where injur injuries happen and guys are just like, like Kyrie, for example. Mm-hmm. Finals game one, 2015. His knees buckled. He does the interview in his locker, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there, I'm doing a video, mm -hmm. and we leave, and the locker was just like, Cleveland, they just lost a classic. Series is still on. They win game two, but that locker room was like, we just lost our fallen soldier. We mm -hmm. lost our point guard. And I didn't get that same sense with Trey. Now, we, I saw the mic'd up with Fred Warder. That was cool. Fred Warder Jr. said, hey, we got your back, Five. Yeah. We got your back, 100%. I saw that, too. It was that was really touching. cool. Was but hard, for the most part, we watched those interviews and the press, and I was just like, I get it. We won. But I couldn't get over the Trey injury. That stadium couldn't get over the Trey injury. There was not a lot of celebrating mm -hmm. that win. And they beat the Seahawks for crying out loud. And we haven't even talked about so, that. So let me ask you this. Is this just simply a byproduct of the gladiator sport of the NFL? Like, meaning, like, we're referencing basketball, and I don't think it's a like-for-like like comp. Like, uh, that's what I want to be fair here, because basketball's so different. The team's so much smaller. You rely so much more on, on individual players. Is, is this just a byproduct of how physical and how dangerous the sport is, the NFL, where they're just wired completely different? Yeah, but I'm trying to think of injuries that's happened. For example, perfect example, Derek Carr. Christmas Eve against the Colts. Okay. Raiders are rolling in 20. What was that? Spinoni 2016? 2016. My first year here at 95-7 again. Mm -hmm. Covered a lot of Raider games at that point. 2016. They beat the Colts. They roll the Colts, Shasky. Roll them. Raiders are one win away from winning the division and having a bye week. They blew out the Colts. And you go in that locker room. And they were like, we lost our quarterback for the season. Nobody cared about the win. Kalecio simply damn near had tears coming out, his, coming out of his eyes. He had to go to the back room. Mac was gone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Who else? Was, Rodney Hudson couldn't even speak. That locker room was despondent. And, they, and that was coming off a big win, and they were one win away from winning the division and going to the playoffs. Was Carr so much more established as the clear-cut guy and not having a guy behind he, him? Does that a good factor point. into it? That may be, that, that's a good point. Because I do that's think the point. nuance of where Trey right. is and having Jimmy behind right. him factors but, into but all this. That's why it's like we all. That's why I was like, "Damn, you brought Jimmy back." This is this is weird, I, right? Well, this is why I'm saying but like that's a it's good not, point. It's that's not a good the point end of the world, but Dante. It's clearly something that like it. It may be nothing. It may be something. I yeah. don't know. I'm not really yeah. sure. I just found it to be odd. Yeah, there's no doubt. That's a good point with Carr. He I was just there. Found it odd. He was riding with them. But I'm just trying to like think of. Big time injuries where I've been in the locker room in the mood. Like Kevin Durant, they, like you said, they all knew he was leaving. Uh, everyone. And, and they were still despondent. And he was like, and of all the acquisitions in recent memories, it was the most mercenary acquisition right. that most people can cite. Right. I, 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 it's just something. I just thought it was a little too happiness in there from some of the players. And then the report comes out from Silver where guys are talking, like now guys are talking. So now if the season snowballs. How many more reports are going to come out? Well, that's the thing I'm worried about. They does. have to win. No, but they B, have to this win. This goes back to the have to win. Like to to tamp down all of this noise, you have to win. I'm just more worried about. It just feels like a lot is getting out. And I remember that when it started to go bad for Harbaugh, it was drip, 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 yep. drip, 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 yep. drip, 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 and it became yep. more toxic. And it wasn't anything until the end. And then you look back and you had more of the perspective, mm -hmm. and you're like, wow. How did I not see this coming? Right. Now, I'm not saying that we're there. We're nowhere near there. But if they start to have any hiccups, if Jimmy goes down, if they don't win, 
I, I just I worry about what might end well, up happening with this just the whole organization. Well, we had the approval rating, right? We did the poll yesterday about the approval rating of Kyle Shanahan. And Kyle Shanahan, now the poll yesterday on 95.7 The Game, at 95.7 The Game, or excuse me, at Morning Roast 95.7. What is your approval rating of 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan right now? 43% approved. To me, that's still low. 30% disapprove. Struggling disapprove, 12%. Struggling approve, 15%. You bring up, they have to win. We had the conversation yesterday about Super Bowl aspirations. Shanahan has to win. And they have to be playing in at least the Final Four. Because now, we already said there's a lot of pressure on Shanahan going into the season. Give it the keys to Trey Lance. Which, to some players... They may not have been on board with that because you read Silver's report, you read Rick, Nick Wagner at ESPN yesterday about the leadership group where they made the decision and he brought in each leader from every position group. Explain that to people that are that are listening right now because you just you just kind of ratted tat tatted that. Well, I was as a matter I was of about fact. to go. No, well, explain no, no, I was it because go. I didn't know this. Did you? Jay Glazer reported it last week. Yeah, but I didn't like really dive deep into it because both so, Albert Breer and Wagoneer. So Kyle went to the team. So Kyle went to the team. Each leader of each positional group. There's about 15, 20 guys. Al Shair is quoted in there. Um, who else is quoted in there? Uh, some of the linemen are quoted in there. And they basically told them, hey, this is what we're going to do. Does anybody have any questions? And one of the questions was, what if Trey struggles? Not if, but when he struggles. What's going to happen? How are we going to deal with this? Mm. So it felt like it wasn't it wasn't a vote. They didn't, Shanahan didn't go in there and say, hey, how many vote for Jimmy? <laughs> say aye. How many vote <laughs> for Who Trey? Say aye. Right. It wasn't that. <laughs> but it was strange to see Shanahan say, hey, this is what we're doing. How do you guys feel about that? Which you can look at it two ways. You can look at it and say, hey, that's a head coach empowering his players to yes. say, this yes. is what we're doing. Yes. Or you can look at, look at it and say, Maybe Shanahan wasn't so sure about this decision. I would look at it more in the the first way that you stated it, right. that this is him trying to let his players know that they have a voice on this team, right. even though ultimately the decision rests with him. Yep. Um, but, I, yeah, I, I don't look at it as that nefarious, the right. way you're looking at it. Like, oh, no, you just lost I, no, power. No, no, I, no, no I said two ways. That. Yeah, two yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. You can look at it that way or you can look at it the other way, right? And so he talked to his players and the way they went about this decision. A lot of people in that room said, man, we're shocked by the situation. There was shock. There was awkwardness. Yeah. The first quarterback meeting when Jimmy walked into the room, Brian Greasy stood up in front of all three quarterbacks, Purdy, Trey Lance, and Jimmy Garoppolo said, all right, Trey, this is your team. Jimmy, you're the backup. Now let's play football. Let's get ready for the Bears. Like, that was the first meeting. <laughs> and Brock, Purdy was, like, Brock Purdy was like, Brock Purdy was like, you know, we knew we had to hear the awkwardness of this, but it was awkward. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. was strange for everybody involved. I love that Brock Purdy is one of the characters in all of this. Brock Purdy's talking. I mean... <laughs> right, like, like, usually you don't see the third street quarterback talking. Yeah. But to your point, yeah. a lot of this is spirally out of control. So, you know, Trent Williams in this article said, I was surprised that nobody made Jimmy Garoppolo their guy. That surprised me more than anything. I expected him to be somewhere, somebody's starting quarterback. And then you get used check last week. Hey, it's the best insurance policy I think you could ever get. So you can really sleep well at night because of that. I don't know, man. It might know. be nothing. It might be something. It might be somewhere in between. It might just be normal operating practice for a football team. The fact that we're hearing so much coming out of the 49ers, I'm telling you, I'm a little worried, B. Like, this is the beginning of this regime. Well, plus, you cannot leak anything to anyone. And yet it feels like every day we get new leaks. The bottom line is this, though. The bottom line is this. If the Niners win... It shuts everything up. It shuts everything Even up. Even just getting to the playoffs. And I think there's more pressure on this organization. Now, Buffalo could say, hey, it's pressure on us to win a Super Bowl. Kansas City could say, oh, it's pressure on us to win the, another Super of Bowl. Of course. Everybody has pressure. Of course. But we're in this bubble. And the pressure now on Kyle Shanahan, especially after the snarkiness of his pressures. And he got a bit defensive on a conference yeah. call. yeah. You know, tell her, hey, I'm going to educate you guys on a run play. Go watch Buffalo. Mm -hmm. And then we all watch Buffalo, and they run the ball one time. And now Niner fans say, well, Buffalo only ran it one time. What are you talking about, Shannon? Now we get Josh Allen does do those keepers and stuff. But you look at Jalen Hurts, most of those designed to the outside. Get out of bounds, Jalen. Get out of bounds. We're going to get you to the outside yeah. to where you have space to either slide or get out of bounds. The pressure on Shannon to win now. I, I know. 
it, you know what it feels like a lot to me, B? Remember the year after the Niners lost to Seattle, all right, uh, with Harbaugh as the head coach? They went 8-8. Eight and eight. Well, they went into that year, and there's this huge Cleveland rumor with Jay Glazer, and the, the locker room was toxic, and they were kind of rolling at the beginning right. of the year. And then it was just like drip, 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 drip. And like everyone's like, as long as they keep winning, it doesn't matter. Ignore all the noise. Ignore all the chatter. And I was one of those people. Believe me, I was sitting in the stands like, it don't matter. Harbaugh's my guy, this, that, and the other. And eventually it felt like all that pressure that you're describing caved mm -hmm. that team in. Now you could say, Joe, the life cycle of the team, Willis missed the year, Bowman missed the year. Like there was a lot going on, you know, in terms of the roster right. getting hurt. But looking back, wouldn't you feel like it cratered them? They were seven and four. Going into a Thanksgiving night game against Seattle. And numerous people told me Jets tweet was on that scoreboard. I don't know if it's true or not. A lot of people said it was. The tweet was like, I'm sorry, Faithful. This was unacceptable. That was, was that the Thanksgiving Fit turkey on the oh 50. Oh my god. Richard Sherman, turkey juice. I can still hear the, Damon doing oh, turkey on the fifth. Oh my gosh. I had to delete Snapchats. I was on a Bay Bridge leaving Thanksgiving dinner. I rate. But they lost that game. And Russell Wilson and Richard Sherman are eating turkey on the logo. That was probably one of the lowest moments I can remember. And then they lost to the Raiders when Cap threw a pick on the yeah. first play and of the game. And he's fighting with, who was that number 55? C.O. Moore. Moore. Halftime. C.O. Moore. C.O. Moore ended Kaepernick. Ended him. Oh. Just got right up in his face that game, too, I remember. That was the worst. That, honestly, now looking back on it, that Raider loss was one of the worst losses in Niner Woodson, history. Charles Woodson had the game-ending uh, pick. Yeah. Yep. If that Cat was the game that the first, cemented them. He threw a pick on the first game, on the first play of the game. Threw a pick. And they lost to Derek Carr. And Derek Carr was like consoling Kaepernick after the game. Like he was the five-year veteran and Kaepernick was the rookie. Look, it was embarrassing. But like Harbaugh still coached that team to 8-8 eight eight despite all the leaks. I know. Despite all the leaks. So that's what I'm saying here. So like all of this could be nothing. And, and Joe, you're just plugging. I'm just sitting here and I'm modern. I'm a Niner fan. I will always be a Niner fan. I get worried at every single turn. I'm worried they're going to lose to this team and that team. And this guy could go down. And, but I'm sitting here and I'm going... There's just a lot of chatter going on, and I, I just hope for their own sake they go out and handle business against Denver. I think it's going to be a really hard game. It's on prime time. Jimmy coming back, first full week. There's a lot going on here. I mean, and the, the way to quiet the noise is just winning week to week. I'm not saying you got to win the Super Bowl. Just win week to week, and it kind of just all these distractions I, go away. Don't you feel like they have to at least make the divisional round this year to kind of shut a lot of people up? With the way the season's gone, I, I'm gonna. I said it before. Whether when it was Trey as quarterback, I'm gonna say it again. Getting into the playoffs is an accomplishment. There's seven teams going to the playoffs. I know. Now, I know. It's not as it's it's, it's, it's not, not as, hard. as prestigious right. as it used to be. Right. But seven Bonte, teams. I still hold that in high regard. Seven teams. We've were, only been to the playoffs what five or six times yeah, since Jeff Garcia. Yeah, no doubt. But that this regime, this is year six of Shed ahead. He's got five the new times. extension. New extension. He's been to the playoffs twice, and you keep saying it. They were down 17 nothing against the Rams in Week 18. I know. Down 17 nothing. He was closer to missing the playoffs for the fourth time in five years than he was to making the playoffs twice in five years. Now we know what happened. They get to the NFC Championship game. You're up 17 to seven. The rest is history. We can talk about that until we're dead, right? And we will talk about it until we're dead. Two 10 point leads in the Super Bowl and the NFC Championship game, and you lose all games. But it feels like if he doesn't make the Niners, don't make the divisional round. At least a lot of chatter, man. A lot of people right now are down because after trying to get rid of Garoppolo, it could even, and I get the shoulder surgery, and I said this to the day it happened. The fact that he's still on his team and he's starting on Sunday, Shasky, he's starting on Sunday. Well, the other part of this, this is not the plan. Uh, no, but like, I hate doing the, well, what if this happens and what if this happens? But all Niner fans start to pivot toward at least looking at some point as you're going beyond the horizon and you're like, okay, let's say they do get to the divisional round, but they lose. And Jimmy looks like comparable Jimmy for the last couple of years. Let's say 25 touchdowns, 13, 14 interceptions, you know, good, not great, but, but better than what Trey was earlier this year. Now what do you do? Two-year deal? I... Like, see, I, I just feel like they're in such an odd spot that I, well, I, for me to even try to think beyond this week feels unfair because I got to see what it looks like. Well, everybody keeps talking about, like, and even Jimmy and even Shed Ahead and Lynch have said this. We don't want, we don't want Jimmy. You know, Jimmy's a damn good player. We're just not going to give him away. He's a damn good player. So if he does look comparable and they're still unknown about Trey Lynch, because let's face it, we don't know anything about Trey Lynch yet. 
I think he'd still be a great player. He's got a broken ankle. That's Every, three injuries now in two years. Uh, it's pause. Well, uh, yeah, I we mean, don't know. Right now, the way I look at it with Trey Lance is it's one of the biggest question marks in the NFL. I, this is how I look at it. Number three overall pick right now, it's a bust. As of right now, it's a bust. You're, you know what? You're probably right. It's a bust. And it pains me to say that. because it's it's another, just, To me right it, you're now. Right. It's, it pains me to, to me say me that right, you're probably right. To me right now, it looks like another first round miss. God, it sucks. It does suck. It sucks. So now you may be forced to give Jimmy a two or three year deal because you know Don Yee's going to say, uh 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 uh. We want two years. We want stability. It's crazy that we're even talking about this. I can't believe it. It's the it. reality of the situation. I when I saw him throwing on that small field, going to these practices, I was like, this is so weird. This is so weird. And the fact that we're here in week well, three, I, it's just. Coach Evans, take her heart. He's been texting me. He's been on the text line, Cockass Business text line. And a lot of a segment of the fans feel like this. Last week, everybody said, a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people said Trey Lance was holding back a Super Bowl roster. Okay. Now the better quarterbacks in the lineup. So why why should we not expect Super Bowl? Why should we not expect big things now? Because Trey apparently was holding back this roster. I, I didn't think that that was a fair assessment it wasn't then, fair. and I don't think that Super Bowl or bust is a fair assessment now. Okay, so you said the word aspirations, aspirations. and I think Mark made a great point that I wasn't even really listening to the right. word aspirations because what that means is like you aspire to a Super Bowl. Well, yeah, right. everybody aspires to a Super Bowl. Super Bowl or bust? That feels so right. harsh to me. And that, I, to me, that's so unrealistic. Dude, and I'm not saying Trey Lance is going to be a bust, but as of right now. We don't know what the number three overall pick is, and he's going to year three next year. It's going to be year three of Trey Lance, and we don't know what he is. So as of right now, it is a bust because he gave up those picks. He gave up those picks, and we don't even know. Two years of Trey, we don't even know who he is. So as of right now, it is a bust. Well, and and feels- I'm not saying two things are different. These are different. I don't think he's going to be a bust, but as of right now, there's nothing to show for the number three overall pick. What's crazy to me is that we painted this picture, myself included, and I was like, oh, this is the perfect situation for the kid. He's going to have an opportunity to slowly ease himself in there. We'll be patient, both the organization, the players, and the fans. And, you know, he's got weapons galore, and this should work. He's got a great defense. Right. I feel like all of those things actually played against him and sped the timeline up. Yeah. Nope. See, uh, Do you know what I'm saying? Yep, no doubt. It was almost like the reverse effect when going right. into it, I thought it would be I, the opposite again, effect. I, and I know people are going to take this out of context. I'm not saying Trey Lance is a bust. But if you just take a step back and say, all right, the number three overall pick, and you gave up three ones for him. And he didn't play for three years. He hasn't played for three years. He's played four games. Or two years full. Four games. Nothing to show for it. Nothing to show for it yet. We don't know. It's an incomplete. And right now, it looks like another first-round whiff. I know. Because now all the talking heads are saying, well, they didn't trust him to throw the football. Wait, wait a minute. You drafted a quarterback number three overall who couldn't throw the football? That's what you're telling me, folks? That's on the head coach. That's on the head coach. George Kittle going to play this week? I, he, boy, he's been doing a lot of talking. He was at WWE the I other know. night. He's, he was talking after the game, too. Which, I didn't know injured players could talk to the media after the game. Which is something odd. That's odd to me. Yeah. As a non-combatant, being in there and being in the locker room, I guess Verrett wasn't in there, but he was. I, I, I never see know. injured players talking. They usually just dip out. I need him go. to play bad. He needs to play. And they need him to play bad. Do you what? see what their record is when he doesn't play? Well, it's bad. Yeah. I think they, they, they've they lost 10 of 15, something like that. Let's go to the it's calls, man. We got, we got Florio at 8 o'clock. Let's get to the calls. Dion and Phoenix been on hold for a while. Dion, what's happening? Dion, you there? Going once, going twice. He gone. By the way, I'll get to the calls just a second, in a second. Coming up in 6 p.m., 95.70 Game and Odyssey present I'm Listening, a two-hour special oh, bringing yeah. awareness to mental health. You'll hear from some of the biggest names in music and sports, as well as featured interviews with Drew Robinson, the baseball player the Giants organization, whose story is incredibly powerful, and former Heisen Trophy Award winner Ricky Williams. I'm Listening, yeah. coming up at 6 p.m. right here Mark, on 95. Mark Willard did those interviews, and yeah. he did a fantastic no job doubt. with those guys. It's it's something that you would like. Everybody, as we start to know about mental health a little more, right. tap in on that. It, it's right. Mark did a great job on that. No doubt. Let's go to David and Brentwood. David, what's happening? You're on the roast. Hey, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Um, just two comments and one quick question. Uh, my first comment, uh, the leaks going on with the 49ers. Uh, 
Well, it, it, it took uh, Miss Combine a one. Okay, the leaks uh, uh, with uh, you know going on to uh, Mark Silver and also uh, some of the players making comments about you know the team being better with Jimmy G. Okay, I think that they are symptoms of what's going on with management. They keep looking at uh, Kyle Shanahan, and from their point of view, Jimmy G has taken them to two NFC championship, championship games and one Super Bowl. That's from their point of view. Trey Lance is a player that they don't really know what's going on with him. If we don't know, I'm sure they're still guessing what's going on with Kyle Shanahan. Is he trying to force feed uh, Trey Lance to them? Uh, is he really good? Uh, what's going on? Uh, in addition to that, I think they're starting to question the way he handles the players. I mean, can you really trust him 100% that he's going to handle you the same way that he handled Jimmy G? I mean, Jimmy G kind of got screwed big time. And my question would be, let's say... Jimmy G actually takes him to a Super Bowl. Do you really think that he will want to sign back with the 49ers with the way he's been treated? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I didn't think, he, look, he, he, I didn't think he'd be back in the 49ers right. uniform right now. So Shed for me to try either. to predict, I'm almost done predicting when it comes to Jimmy right. and the Niners. I, and, I, I can't. And, 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 I've been wrong at every turn. And in this article by Nick Wagner, ESPN, Shed Ahead is in there. Basically, Nick Wagner reported that Shed Ahead said, Jimmy's not going to want to come back as a backup. He's not going to want to come back for less money. But if you want to ask him, John, let's go ahead and ask him. It's in their article. Jimmy came back because he said after the game Sunday, I'm comfortable here. I know the system. I know the and, players. And he looked I know it. the locker room. And and the players looked like they were comfortable yeah. around him. So let me let me rephrase what I said. As of right now with Trey Lance as a number three overall pick. He's trending toward not being a, a, an impact player. And as a, okay, okay, if you were just uh, if the spectrum is Mahomes. Right. And then Jamarcus Russell, right? Because, right? like, Jamarcus, most people would put it at right. the low end. And I have empathy for Jamarcus. Right. Ryan Lee. If there was a scale. Put Ryan Lee. Okay, there. if there was a scale. And Mahomes is the best version right. of these young quarterbacks drafted. And then you look at some of the – or Trubisky. Let's use Trubisky yep. as an example. He's more toward Trubisky than he is Mahomes. Yep. And that's not a – he just hasn't played. Yep. I think that that's a fair assessment so, so right that's now. that's where I'm at, folks. Right? For you all you guys getting on, on me about the, Yes, no doubt. I get what you're And saying. I don't even think it's and, fair because you, we've only played three or four and, games. And you understand where I'm coming from. Of As course. of right now, the number three overall pick has gotten you nothing. If we can assess that Solomon Thomas through two years did nothing for the team, we can do the same for the quarterback. Solomon Thomas did not pan out with the 49ers. Ruben Foster did not pan out with the 49ers. Mike McGlinchey, number nine overall pick, hasn't played like the ninth <laughs> overall pick. And I will, you also have to hold out this part. I thought Alex Smith was going to leave the team four different times. Yes, yeah, same here. Okay? I thought his career was yep. over yep. five different times. Yep. And he proved me wrong every single yep. turn and actually turned his career around and yep. made a lot of money and made, an, and made a Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the story for Trey Lance. Not even close. But he's got a very long road to go. We still don't know. He's so young. You brought it up the other day. By the time he starts another football game in 2023, that will be his seventh start in 45 months. That's insane. But Alex That's missed nearly four years. Alex, Alex missed almost two full years with the Niners. He did. Because of the shoulder but injury. But he also played a lot of college football. No, no doubt. Three and that's years the thing with Trey Lance. Agreed. He only played one year of college football. One year. And I'm, I, man, I want Trey Lance. We got the cue card up there. I might as well take the cue card down because I thought Trey was going to explode this year because I thought he would throw the football, not run quarterback power. I thought he would throw the football down the field. I thought that's where you got him to take the top off the defense. That's why Danny Gray's in the slot running deep routes. I thought Trey was going to take this offense to another level. So I didn't like, but as of right now, the number three pick's gotten you nothing. Nothing. I know. And it looks like a whiff as of right now. Trey can change, he could change that. But do we really have faith in Trey under Shanahan right now? I mean, I have no faith that he can stay healthy right now. And do you have faith in Shanahan right now developing him? As of right now, no, because Jimmy's regressed under Shanahan. Shanahan's track record is better than Trey's track record, but they need to be tied at the hip. So it's it's a weird, like there's a correlation right. between the two. Right. I believe in Shanahan to a degree. I'll admit yeah. to you, though, I'm the biggest Shanahan fan, I believe, on this station. And yet at the same time, my confidence is shaking a little with him. Shook. And, and I'd be lying if I said anything else. All right, let's go to Robin Padol real quick and then Randy and San Lorenzo before we get to Florio. Rob, what's happening? You're on the roast. What's going on? Good morning, guys. How you guys doing? Good, good, good. So yeah, no man, I'm, I'm hearing I'm hearing what you guys are saying, but uh, you know, it, it sounds more and more like that. You know, 
you guys are assuming that Jimmy's going to want to stay. He, he's not going to want to stay. It, he he has to win a Super Bowl in order for even the fan base to want him back. Because if he takes him down to the Super Bowl and loses, you know, it's going to be the same story. Everyone's going to be calling for a new quarterback, and then Trey Lance is going to come back right back in. You know, I mean, it, it, it's a lose-lose situation for him. He has to win it all or he's gone. And, and just the whole vibe of the building, I feel like, you know, he's better off going to a different team and, uh, and and showing them what he got rather than staying here. It's so hard to try to extrapolate what we think is going to happen over the next 15, 16 weeks. Like, Don't know. can he stay healthy? Don't does know. he look good? You know, d- does the team respond right. to him? Do they win games? Like, there's a lot of layers to this. Yep. And if they win, we'll worry about the offseason right. and the offseason. A lot of people ask us, what about the Broncos? We'll get to the Broncos. We'll get to Today's Russell Wilson. Wednesday. We'll get to we'll get to the Broncos Thursday, Friday, be heavy, preview of the game. But I'll break down their defense. Monday was the Trey package. Tuesday was the Shanahan package. Today's the Garoppolo package. Even though we keep veering back to Trey and Shanahan. How can you not? I mean, this it's a devastating injury. Yeah. I feel so bad for the young man. I feel so bad for him. And I feel bad that we like as a fan base, we were so excited to just see. Like, let's see what he's got. And the leaks and we make, don't get to even see it. And the leaks make it that much disappointing. That, that much more disappointing. After the game, the audacity to talk about that. Yeah, you know, it sucks for Trey, but, you know, we know Jimmy gives us a better shot to win. That sucks. That sucks that people will talk to Michael Silver and leak that right after a football game. Coaches and players. Shame on them. Spadoni, you know you know what time it is. It's time for the injury report. It really hurts. Brought to you by Boxer and Gerson, Northern California's premier workers' compensation law firm, helping injured workers get their lives back for over 40 years. Death, taxes, and another 49ers injury. This time, it's Tyler Croft. He suffered an MCL sprain during Sunday's game against the Seattle Seahawks and will be out for at least a few weeks. You gotta be kidding me. The good news regarding the 49ers side is that Kyle Shanahan said George Kittle is closer to returning to the field, saying that playing on Sunday Night Football could be the difference in Kittle being active in week number three. I need to see 85 on this field. Gotta see him on his field. Yeah, they miss him in the run game, even though they ran the ball quite right. well. And they miss him in the passing Not game. Not Ty Davis-Price. Elijah Mitchell, Tyler Croft, Trey Lance. Jimmy Ward. Jimmy Ward. Another injury. Another mm. injury. Injury report brought to you by Boxer and Gerson. Northern California's premier workers' compensation law firm helping injured workers get their lives back for over 40 years. What's coming up on the game? Sponsored by Fremont Bank, Full Service Banking. No compromises. Our best friend in the whole wide world. Pro Football Talks, Mike Florio. Oh, I can't wait. On the 49ers situation. That's coming up next on The Roast. Are you looking for a rewarding new career? Join the United States Postal Service and apply for roles nationwide. Serve your community with pride and receive benefits including competitive pay and opportunities for advancement. Whether you are looking for full-time, part-time, or seasonal positions, we have options that may be perfect for you. The United States Postal Service is an equal opportunity employer. Apply now at usps.com slash careers. Kirby! It's your driveway mechanic, and they bring the shop to you. Brakes and tire replacements, oil changes, and more. And they just added an eco-friendly wash. Barely uses any water and makes your car look brand new. I'm actually going to use it today, Bonte. Uh, hopefully it just stops raining so then I can actually call this bad boy in. The ultimate convenience. Easy booking, transparent pricing, on-time arrival, service in your driveway. No waiting rooms. No coordinating rides. Direct access to the mechanic. Friendly and reliable service. No middlemen and no upsells. Get $50 off your first oil change with the code OIL50. That's OIL50. Check out Kirby.com. That's C-U-R-B-E-E.com. Are you looking for a rewarding new career? Join the United States Postal Service and apply for roles nationwide. Serve your community with pride and receive benefits including competitive pay and opportunities for advancement. Whether you are looking for full-time, part-time, or seasonal positions, we have options that may be perfect for you. The United States Postal Service is an equal opportunity employer. Apply now at usps.com slash careers. BART is turning 50, and we'd love to celebrate with you. Get 50% off of your ride in honor of BART's 50 years of service to the Bay Area when you pay with Clipper. That's 50% off Clipper BART fares for the entire month of September. Add Clipper to your digital wallet for free. If you're eligible for other Clipper discounts like youth or senior fares, you get to take an additional 50% off of those too. 
Details at BART.gov slash 50 years. Celebrate BART's 50 years of service with us this September. Let's go. The gamer, the call maker, the experience chaser. What if you could be everything all at once? Galaxy Z Fold 4 is powered by the Snapdragon processor for world-class performance and lightning-fast speed to turbocharge your multitasking. How about an expansive edge-to-edge screen for immersive gaming, hands-free video calls with flex mode, and multi-window view to use up to three apps at the same time? With Galaxy Z Fold 4, do more with ease and make multitasking a breeze. Available now at Samsung.com. Do you think all premium fuels are the same? Well, your engine doesn't. Shell V Power Nitro Plus helps keep your engine running like new because it's engineered to defend against four main engine threats. Gunk, wear, corrosion, and friction. So next time, choose Shell's most advanced fuel ever. It's fuel for thought. In engines that continuously use Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. There's a reason Comcast Business powers more businesses than any other provider. Actually, there's a few. Comcast Business offers the fastest reliable network, the peace of mind that comes with Security Edge, helping to protect all your connected devices, and the most reliable 5G mobile network. Want me to keep going? I can. Whether your small business is starting or growing, you need Comcast Business. Technology solutions that put you ahead and give you serious savings. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. Get started with fast speeds and advanced security. Together for just $69.99 a month for 12 months with a two-year agreement. Or find out how to get up to a $650 prepaid card with a qualifying bundle. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. New 50 megabits per second internet and security edge customers only. Requires enrollment in EcoBill and AutoPay. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. Comcast Business Mobile utilizes the network with the most fruit metrics 5G data reliability wins in 1H 2022. Results may vary, not an endorsement. Come into Friedman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill September 23rd through September 25th for their fall clearance sale event. Take advantage of factory direct prices, one-of-a-kind opportunities, special pricing on floor models, and convenient financing. And save on new appliances from trusted brands like Mila, Bosch, Electrolux, LG, and Maytag. Visit Freeman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill for their fall clearance sale event September 23rd through September 25th for the best time to save on new appliances for your home. Hey guys, Mike Valeni for Cash the Ticket Podcast. If you like sports betting or if you just like sports, it's the podcast for you. We try to cover all the big games and maybe some of the games you didn't even know were important. Give you some angles, pick some winners, have a good time, and hopefully help you uh, meander through college and pro football season. So join us a couple times a week to get all your information you need to bet the games that you watch. It's Cash the Ticket on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's, so thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover. All for just three bucks, plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter code JOY at checkout. That's harrys.com, code JOY. Enjoy! You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM at HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. It's time to wake up with a nice cup of morning roast. Oh, yeah. 
featuring Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky. And while I'm about that action, boss. Take him out! This is the morning roast on 95.7 The Game. Oh, baby. Good morning, everybody out there. Niners and Broncos, Sunday Night Football. Both teams one and one. This is going to be a big time game. We'll see Russell Wilson back. Russell Wilson. You get Seattle one week, Russell Wilson the next week. Telling me the NFL don't got a little WWE in them. Let's ride. Let's ride. Oh, my God. You see him trying to copy Brady with his videos now? Oh, God. Russell. He's leaning into the courtiness, though. I give him that. I give him that. Brady, there is a lot going on with him and his wife. My wife is all over monitoring the Giselle oh Brady situation. Oh, boy. We need an update from Michelle, then. Uh, need an update. She's all over it. All right. We're going to do that. By the way, good morning, everybody on YouTube, Twitch, Comcast Business Text Line, all she the phone calls. She says it's worse than 60-day marriage. 60-day <laughs> marriage. You Brady, know you watch it. Right, right, no. Don't hate Anna, on a Anna watches it. I don't. You can ask Anna. My I don't watch it. I walk that, out the room. Uh, below I, deck. I'd rather, I'd rather watch old... Catfish. NFL footage. No, I'd rather talk to Mike Florio. Oh. I'd rather talk to Mike Florio. Pro football talk, of course, Mike Florio. I missed Mike. He's a friend of the morning roast. I know. He started off on Rocky Roads. But, you know, he came back on the show and we're best friends again. Mike, good morning. Put Welcome on, on to the roast. Joe Shad's going to butcher Bonte Hill. And I'm just going to ask you right off the bat. Right off the bat. How would you assess the way the 49ers handled the quarterback situation dating back to the offseason? Well, I mean, it's been a roller coaster. It's been unconventional. It's been bizarre. And ultimately, this was something that we said many times on PFT Live during training camp while the 49ers were waiting out the possibility of a starting quarterback being injured elsewhere and opening the door for a trade. There's a chance that the injury is going to happen in their own backyard to their own starting quarterback. And it ultimately did. Now, it happened after they abandoned the idea of trying to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. They kept him on a reduced contract for which he will make more and more money as he now plays. But sometimes things just have a way of working out. And maybe they needed to go through that process of trying to trade him to realize there wasn't going to be a real trade opportunity out there. Maybe Jimmy Garoppolo needed to understand that no one was going to beat down the door to try to sign him as the starter. And the best move for everyone was to be patient. And now he gets a chance to play the 49ers unless they sign him to a new contract before next March can't keep him from becoming a free agent this is a win-win for the team and for him because without him around it would have been nate sudfeld most likely still on the roster Mm. the guy who steps in for trey lance so they've got a chance to salvage the season he's got a chance to reignite another stage of his career and it worked out well and they didn't deliberately plan it this way but they had to at least be thinking it's somewhere in the back of their minds that that this could happen and it did. And now they're in much better shape than they would have been. Mike, let me ask you this, because you brought up Nate Sudfeld. And I wonder if Shanahan would have used Trey Lance the way he used him in the first two games of the season. Going back last year in Arizona, he ran the ball 16 times. Not All of them's not quarterback design runs, but 16 rushes for the quarterback. Then we saw what happened in Chicago, and it wasn't a monsoon until the fourth quarter. I was at that game in Soldier Field. The rain was relatively light during the first three quarters, and yet we've seen Roquan Smith take shot after shot on him. And then, of course, against Seattle. Do you like the way Shanahan handled Trey Lance and utilized him uh, in those four games that he's played before he broke his ankle? Well, look, we saw him get injured last year. In the two games he started, he got injured in the preseason. The durability questions have been there, and that's the ultimate irony of the entire experiment with Trey Lance. They fell out of love with Jimmy Garoppolo fundamentally because he can't stay healthy. They can't trust him to stay healthy, and it turns your season upside down when your quarterback's gone for the entire year like he was in 2018. 2020 when he suffers a week two ankle injury and he's gone for an extended stretch and by the time he's able to go again it's too late for it to make a difference and now you get a guy who has a separate durability issue now what can you do to protect and avoid a broken ankle those things can happen it's unfortunate for the team it's very unfortunate for the player but this all gets back to the question of whether or not they made the right move when they decided to invest the resources in getting the third overall pick. They ultimately invested three first-round picks and a third-round pick in the player, Trey Lance. They could have drafted Justin Fields. They could have drafted Mac Jones. They didn't have to go up to number three. They did, and it's going to continue to resonate into next year and beyond. So I, I think you don't draft Trey Lance without planning to use him in a way that suits his talents. I just think the question they needed to ask themselves before they ever put his name on the card is this a guy that we want to have 
knowing that we're going to use him in a way that subjects him to potential injury. So seeing how the players responded on the field, in the post-game locker room, seeing how the Vegas odds move and how the national narrative is completely shifted, the Niners are better with Jimmy Garoppolo, did they just botch this whole move up to get a quarterback thing and think that they could just stick a kid in there to replace Jimmy Garoppolo and try to quote-unquote win on the fly? Usually what happens when a team makes an all-in move for a franchise quarterback, they're already bad. They're trying to get better. They aren't established. They aren't on the brink of winning a Super Bowl. That's why I think the 49ers made their mistake by getting desperate by, and I believe firmly, they watched Super Bowl 55, Tom Brady versus Patrick Mahomes, and they knew that they failed to evaluate Mahomes in 2017 because, as Kyle Shanahan has admitted, he uh, thought he was going to get Kirk Cousins in free agency the next year. Didn't even do the workup on Mahomes. And his good friend Chris Sims, who works with me now at NBC and on PFG Live, was telling him you need to take a look at Mahomes, and he didn't. Okay, that was mistake number one. Mistake number two, Tom Brady wants to come home, finish his career with the 49ers. They said, no, thank you. We're sticking with Jimmy G. They see both of those guys squaring off in the Super Bowl, and then within a month or so after that, what do they do? They, they give up everything that they have to give up to move up to number three, knowing that they're not going to get Trevor Lawrence or Zach Wilson, content to have their pick of any of the next cut of quarterbacks. Yeah, I think that they overreacted. I think they got desperate. I think they just decided, screw it, we're going to go get somebody that's going to be better than Jimmy Garoppolo. And it puts so much pressure on Trey Lance. So much. The only one in all of this I feel sorry for because he didn't ask for it. He got yeah. drafted into it. It's a horrible situation for a guy to try to start his career in. And now the pressure on him next year is only going to be worse hmm. because next year is the payoff year. It's now hmm. or never. And he's trying to recover from a broken ankle. It's going to be horrible for him next year. Mike, I, I find this a very fascinating uh, conversation be for a variety of reasons. But going back to when they hired Lynch and Shanahan, Part of it was this leaks, the leaks, the leaks, the leaks, and all the negative stuff that was coming out of Santa Clara and just the 49er front office, right? That's that's what was happening, and, and and it was quiet for a long time. Now, people are saying, hey, it's because they're a box office team, and everyone wants to talk about them, but it feels like it's drip after drip after drip, whether it's the Mac Jones mm -hmm. thing, whether it's Jimmy and, and Matthew Stafford. I mean, there's so many different angles to this and all of the drama coming out. What do you make of all of the leaks and the drippage and the players celebrating and saying we're better, and what do you make of all this? Well, well, the bottom line is it's a team that's very fascinating because it has a set of dynamics that other teams just don't. A team that had a Super Bowl one, ten point lead with seven minutes left. Not that I need to remind. Uh -huh. your Thanks. Audience. We bring it up Twist every day, knife, Mike. 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 We bring it up every day because we're now looking at Kyle Shanahan. But continue. We'll get to Shanahan in just a second. But, but, but the point. But the point is, it sets the context. Yes. It's yes. a team that has attracted attention. Yes. It's a team that is in this weird weird gap of are they good are they not good are they you know they're they're good because of kyle shanahan and john lynch but they're not great because of kyle shanahan and john lynch it reminds me of the thing that richard dent had about the bears of the 1980s they mm. won a super bowl because of mike ditka and they won a super bowl <laughs> and only one super bowl because of mike ditka there's just something missing there there and 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 the question is and look, I'm not saying that Shanahan and Lynch should be on the hot seat, but the question is, are they capable of getting the team over the hump? And they're trying, I think, too hard to get the team over the hump, but it just makes for a fascinating team that is conducive to people wanting to know what's going on behind that curtain. Wow, Mike Florio, so, Pro Football Talk, well NBC, very well said yeah. on the morning rush right now, 95 7 the game. Now, you've reported a lot of things about the 49ers. Some, some of the stuff we agree with, some of it we don't, but... I think the whole quarterback situation since he's gotten here, Shasky knows. I've been yelling from 2017. How do you not take Mahomes or or Watson in that draft number three overall? You take Watson and then you realize, oh snap, we need a quarterback because it's not going to be available. Let's trade for Jimmy. And let's be honest, Jimmy was a gift to them from Bill Belichick. Now that Jimmy is back under center, should we recalibrate our expectations? Should it now be, hey, this team has a Super Bowl roster? Trey Lance is holding it back. They should be able to go contend for a Super Bowl again. Should that be the expectation again now that Jimmy Garoppolo's under center? I don't know that it should be the expectation, but it's not unreasonable to hope for that outcome. Because, yes, it is a Super Bowl-ready team, and that was the big 
risk that the team was taking by turning the reins over to Trey Lance. Because here's a guy who's learning on the fly, trying to get to his ceiling. We don't know what his ceiling is. They don't know what his ceiling is. That's true of any quarterback yeah. who is drafted in round one. For every guy that turns out to be great, there's a bust. Look at 2018. You had Baker Mayfield. Where is he right now? Yeah. Donald, where is he right now? You've got uh, uh, Josh Allen, who's the best of all of them. You've mm-hmm. got Lamar Jackson, who looked like he was going to be the best of all of them. You've got Josh Rosen, who's languishing on the Browns practice squad right now. So, you know, it's going to work for some guys and it's not going to work for others. But I think the, the bigger question that teams need to ask themselves, are we putting these young kids in a position where they can naturally thrive? And I think the deck's been stacked against Trey Lance from day one. He comes through the door with a guy who took the team to a Super Bowl. He sits on the bench while that guy almost takes them to another Super Bowl, and then all of a sudden he's given the keys. But, oh, by the way, you're going to have a backseat driver. The guy that we got rid of, we're still keeping him around. And now next year, I doubt that Jimmy Garoppolo is still going to be on the team next year, but who the hell knows at this point? <laughs> but next year is is has got to be the year. And, you know, you can look at it and say, hey, all right, fine, it's a ton of pressure on Trey Lance, but if he can't handle this, he can never handle the pressure of – conference championship game or Super Bowl, but but still, you know, some quarterbacks, plenty of quarterbacks get a chance to develop without that weight of the world mm. on them, and I, it's just not fair to Trey Lance. I feel bad for him. I almost feel like whether he needs a fresh start somewhere else Ugh. to ever become the best quarterback he can be, as given all the weird stuff that's gone on it, in two years. Isn't it interesting that we, myself included, Mike, I, I'm, I'm at the, the front of this saying, hey, he's in the best situation to succeed. He's got, uh, you know, a great playmakers and a great defense and a good offensive coach, and they, they run the ball really well, and it almost feels like all of the success and everything around him and the expectations actually worked against him and right. sped the process of criticism up and it, it seems almost ridiculously unfair now or am i just playing the results card no i mean you're right you look at it and say hey he's in the best position to succeed the other mm. side of that coin is oh you're in the best position to succeed <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's on you i remember last year we were led to believe that there was going to be a trey lance package in every yeah. game right and then all of a sudden kyle shanahan abandoned it and And he was trying to be kind of cute and coy. Well, I never really said I was going to do it in the regular season. Well, why'd you create? I mean, what? what, How does that help? Right? It's just. It was just a weird move where I think he knew that Trey Lance just wasn't ready, and he didn't want to entrust the offense to him even on a part-time basis, and he didn't want to undermine Jimmy Garoppolo. And he made the decision at some point: we're just going all in with Jimmy G. And who knows what would have happened if Trey Lance hadn't gotten injured? At some point, does he just go all in with Jimmy G anyway? Who knows? I, I wasn't believing this notion that Jimmy was only ever going to be the backup. I think there was going to be a point where Jimmy would have been mm. brought in if Trey Lance wasn't getting it done. But, you know, th- this just does not bode well for the future. The Do- 49ers have a team that can be very good this year, that can contend for a Super Bowl, that could win a Super Bowl. But come next year, I don't know what they're going to do. And I don't think they know what they're going to do because they're not going to think about it. it- uh, until the season's over, or at least until much later into the current it, campaign. It, it feels very confusing for most Niner fans, uh, where it's like the team has had some unbelievable success, but then it feels like the whole reason why they brought this guy in was to fix the quarterback spot, and yet we have more questions <laughs> about the quarterback spot than ever before. Should he have an opportunity, let's just say hypothetically, to find another guy? Do you trust Kyle Shanahan six to years. get this right at quarterback? Six years, Mike? Well, and here's here's the challenge. He has always wanted, and I, I think back to 2011 after the lockout ended and he was the offensive coordinator in Washington working with his dad. Yeah. Rex Grossman was one of the candidates to be the starter, and Rex Grossman explained to reporters at the time that he was confident he would win the job because he knows what Kyle Shanahan wants. He wants someone who is going to run the offense exactly the way he has designed it. Drop back the way that Kyle Shanahan has drawn it up, go through the reads the way that he wants. If you run it exactly the way that Shanahan wants it, you are regarded as the best choice for the job. Because basically he's on the sideline with a joystick controlling the quarterback, and the guy who does what he wants wins. And that has caused him, I think, to shy away from this new age quarterback who, when the play that's called doesn't work, can go out there and make something happen on his own, on the fly, whether it's Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, 
even Aaron Rodgers, he's been doing that for years. Kyler Murray and his 20.8 second improvisation for <laughs> right. two point conversion. I don't think Shanahan wants guys like that. I don't think he wants anyone who's going to have the physical skills to thus have the temptation to say, I'm bailing on the play that Kyle Shanahan called and I'm going to do my own thing. Mm. And that's where he needs to look in the mirror and really ask himself, has, has the game evolved beyond my preferred mm. vision of how a quarterback's going to run an offense? Very interesting. Mike Florio here on the Morning Roast on 95.7 The Game. Real quick, do you think the Niners were in on Watson before all the allegations of Houston? Because it feels like they were in on a couple of those guys before they moved all those pieces to go get Trey Lance number three overall. I think that they were doing their due diligence. I never heard specifically that they were a suitor. For Deshaun Watson, remember, Watson had that no-trade clause, and he right. was able to handpick his team. And I think he was focused on Miami. So I just don't think it, it ever it ever got to that point. But, but what's the timeline? The stuff started right. to come out about Watson, and then it was a week or two after that that they did the trade right. up to the, the third overall pick in the draft. So, you know, who knows? If, if the stuff doesn't come out about Watson, do they eventually try to get in the hunt for, for him? Uh, look at it this way. Again, three first-round picks and a third-round pick to get Trey Lance. Not two first-round picks, three. Because every time you use a first-round pick, you are trading a first-round right. pick for the player. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's three and a third. You could have gotten Deshaun Watson for that. Wow. And, and you know, my typical approach is if I have proven commodity versus unproven commodity for that kind of draft capital, yeah. Yeah. I'll go with the proven commodity. Yeah. Now, now the, the off-field stuff obviously throws a wrench into it, but they should have been because Deshaun Watson is basically what what they see in Trey Lance, <laughs> potentially. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'd be surprised if they weren't at least thinking about it, but, but they wisely backed off after the off-field stuff. Right. So, before we let you go, and we do appreciate the time today, Mike. You always give us time. We, we do. We are thankful for that. I want to follow up on what's going to happen in the offseason. It's going to be year seven to shed ahead. How many and and I'm with you. I don't think Shanahan should be on any hot seat, but I'm watching every single week this year saying, hmm, how's it gonna look? Because it feels like he has to win more so than ever now, at least this year, and get to the divisional round with Jimmy Garoppolo with this roster. It's gonna be year seven to Shanahan. And we still don't know who the quarterback is. I mean, how many coaches or GMs get that much leeway where they gotta figure out the quarterback position every single year where you're not married to Garoppolo or whatnot? It's just Totally bizarre to me, and it feels like Shanahan's not going anywhere anytime soon. I think the move before Shanahan would ever be on the hot seat would be to find a new general manager that Lynch would take the fall. Because Lynch is the guy who's working for Shanahan. It's easy to forget the circumstances that led to the hiring of John Lynch. Lynch got that job for one very important reason. Because Shanahan has final say over everything, they couldn't hire someone from someone else's front office. Their options were limited in what they could actually do. So they have to go outside the industry. Somebody who's currently available, Lynch was available because he was working in broadcasting. That's how he got in the door in the first place. So at some point, you know, usually it's the GM runs the show and the coach works for the GM and the GM gets to hire a couple of coaches before the GM's in trouble. Sometimes the GM gets one coach. Sometimes like John Isaac with the Jets several years ago, he didn't even have a chance to hire a coach. He got fired with Rex Ryan before he could fire Rex Ryan and hire his own guy. But Shanahan, at some point, I think, before he would be on the hot seat, he gets a chance to go get a new general manager. Because, let me tell you, I don't know who the person is in the organization that keeps talking him out of whatever it is that he wants to do. A quarterback like he wanted Kirk Cousins, they talked him into Garoppolo. The thinking is he wanted Mac Jones, somebody talked him into Trey Lance. At some point, he's going to have enough ammunition that he can go to Jed York or Parag Marate or someone else and say, look, look, I, my instincts are right. Somebody keeps talking me out of what I want to do. we got to make some changes here. So what I want ultimately is what happens, and we don't have people who are trying to talk me into something else. Because every time they try to talk me into something else, it ends up not working. I, I see, Mike, and I, that there's a lot of validity to that. That's my problem with Shanahan. If you got the final say, go get your guy. If Trey Lance wasn't your guy, why'd you draft him? But now we keep hearing, well, Trey Lance can't throw the ball. It's a little bit on Trey, no doubt about it. But it's also on Shanahan. He's our offensive guru, right? That's on Shanahan. This is a great example of why it's important in every organization to have strong leadership 
that welcomes dissenting views, but that doesn't yield to them, that can push back instead of saying, okay, fine, uh, you're right. I got, I got nothing to say in response to the argument you made that talked me out of what I wanted to do, even though as time goes by, it's obvious that the boss should have held Trump. So, you know, I'd never really thought of it that way because I do think it's important to have voices in your organization that will push back tactfully against leadership. But leadership has to know when to listen and when to say, thank you for your input, but I'm still going to do what I wanted to do anyway. Thank you, Mike. Mike, that was great. Good stuff, Mike. A lot of great stuff. We really appreciate it. Good talking to you. Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk. Pro Football Talk, NBC. A lot there. What's what? the most compelling thing that he said to you? Because I like it. See, people can have their opinions on Mike, but I like that he is very firm on things that he believes, whether I agree or not, and they make me think. I don't have to agree with everyone, but every now and then when I hear somebody who makes me think outside my parameters, I find it interesting. He's still very firm in that someone had to convince him yeah. into Trey Lance. Do you believe that? I don't know how much I believe it, now but that it is a larby. Some, now that we have it's some, a larby. some of the play, it, that's a, that's an indictment on him. On who? You have final, on who? Shanahan. Okay. If you have final say, don't do something you don't want. To, I don't make you say what you. Hey, Shaska, I need you to say this. Blah, blah, blah. You're going to say what you want to say on these head, airwaves. Head coach and quarterback is as close to a marriage I know. as close to a marriage as you can find. And we all agree, prearranged marriages, unless you're the queen and the right. king, uh, totally bad. Yeah. Do not work. You want to find someone that you 90 love. 90-day fiancé, do not. Otherwise, no. you're going to be miserable, right. right? You are. So on that, if that's true, which I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't know be, if it's true. Seeing the play calling, who knows? Could it be that the kid didn't develop as much as he wanted? He didn't trust? I don't even know. Hypothetically, if that's true, Shasky, I don't even it know. makes me feel worse about Shed Ahead right now. If, it, if he got coerced? If he got coerced into this. Because now we're going to year seven. You mean to tell me you've been coaching this team for six years, your first ever head coaching job, and you're going to die on somebody else's sword? Well, and you're not going to make the finals decision? You're going to be like, oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, talk me out of that. Well, right. the one Come thing on. that I, again, I don't pretend to be a draft expert, but when I heard Andy Reid say, we had to move up to get Mahomes right. in front of these other teams, he had clearly identified a specific player. Yep. He knew the value of the board yep. and where he would get him. Now, if he knew he Mahomes was going to be Mahomes, who knows? Sean Payton, for example, right. said he knew who Mahomes was, and they took Marcus Lattimore. Right. But okay? they wanted Mahomes. But they did. Yeah. But they took Lattimore. Right. And everyone agrees, quarterback more important than corner. Corner's great. You traded up to number three to have the third pick, and you thought that you could make it work with the quarterback – now, looking back on it, I do think it's fair to question. That's like, a big swing and a miss, Shasky. If you move up the three right, let's, let's we're just going to we're gonna move up for the pick. Yeah. But we're not we're not sold on the player. Come on, man. It's a that, lot to move. That's a lot to move to not know who you're going to draft. More coming up here, brought to you by the San Diego Tourism Authority. Hey, Becky, what about this beat for your next song? Mm. It's cool, but I'm into faster stuff lately. Like Xfinity, that gives me beyond gig speeds. Got it. What about this thing? Mm. It sounds powerful, just like Xfinity. Because its supersonic Wi-Fi has three times the bandwidth, you can connect hundreds of devices at once. <laughs> That's what I call power. Unbeatable internet from Xfinity. Made to do anything so you can do anything. Get the Xfinity Supersonic Bundle with unlimited gig speed internet, Wi-Fi equipment included, and a free 4K streaming box. All for $50 a month with a two-year internet rate guarantee and no annual contract when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash gig, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New gigabit extra internet customers only. Taxes and fees extra and subject to change. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. Reduced speeds after 20 gigabytes wireless usage. After 24 months, regular rates apply. Requires compatible Xfinity Gateway. Everything, our farm, our stand, our pop-up shop, it really all started when we discovered the benefits of local, raw honey for our family. And then we decided to turn it into a business. We were looking for something to help us get up and running. So we got the Chase Business Complete Banking Account. It's more than a bank account. It comes with Quick Accept, which lets us take card payments anytime, anywhere in the U.S. using the Chase mobile app. Plus, we get same-day deposits at no extra cost. For us, it's more than honey. It's about sharing a little sweetness with the world. 
Get the Chase Business Complete Banking Account with the essentials you need to help get your business going. Learn more at chase.com backslash business dash complete dash banking. Chase for business. Make more of what's yours. Quick Accept is not available in U.S. territories. Enrollment required. Usage subject to approval. Same day deposits available for payments before 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Sunday to Friday. Fees and rates apply for checking and processing. Limitations and restrictions apply. Participants compensated. Merchant services provided by Payment Tech LLC and WePay Inc. Subsidiaries of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Pink Floyd's Roger Waters. This is not a drill. We're doing a show in the round. It's something new. I look forward to the challenge. Featuring his songs from the golden era of Pink Floyd. Friday and Saturday, September 23rd and 24th, Chase Center in San Francisco. Tickets on sale now at rogerwaters.com. This is not a drill. Produced by AEG Presents. Do you think all premium fuels are the same? Well, your engine doesn't. Shell V Power Nitro Plus helps keep your engine running like new because it's engineered to defend against four main engine threats. Gunk, wear, corrosion, and friction. So next time, choose Shell's most advanced fuel ever. It's fuel for thought. In engines that continuously use Shell V Power Nitro Plus premium gasoline. Kirby is your driveway mechanic. They bring the shop to you with brake replacements, oil changes, washes, and so much more. Get $50 off your first oil change with code OIL50 at Kirby.com. That's C-U-R-B-E-E.com and use code OIL50. Dell Technologies semi-annual sale has arrived, and it's time to upgrade to the latest business technology. Save big on laptops and desktops with Windows 11 Pro. Plus, get amazing deals on server, storage, and cloud solutions, as well as top work accessories, including docks, monitors, and more. Dell Technologies recommends Windows 11 Pro for business. Call a Dell Technologies advisor at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL for special business offers during our semi-annual sale. Man, I slept. New z Pure Z's Restorative Herbal Sleep is made for people who are tired of being tired. I've never slept like this before. I've never woken up like this before. A melatonin-free sleep aid made with a botanical blend that contains clinically studied and effective valerian root, hops, and passion flower, shown to help promote better restorative sleep. z Pure Z's Restorative Herbal Sleep. Sleep this good, feel this good. Available at retailers near you. Dell Technologies semi-annual sale has arrived, and it's time to upgrade to the latest business technology. Save big on laptops and desktops with Windows 11 Pro. Plus, get amazing deals on server, storage, and cloud solutions, as well as top work accessories, including docks, monitors, and more. Dell Technologies recommends Windows 11 Pro for business. Call a Dell Technologies advisor at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL for special business offers during our semi-annual sale. In San Francisco today, morning showers, otherwise sunny, highs in the mid-60s. Brought to you by Ashley Furniture. Your neighborhood Ashley store has all the styles, selection, and value you'll need to invite fall in this season. Find furniture you'll love by shopping locally or visit ashley.com today. Score big with Xfinity the internet. It's made to do anything so you can do anything. Supercharge your home with the game-changing speed of supersonic Wi-Fi. With three times more bandwidth, it covers the field and then some and blocks billions of threats with advanced security that helps keep you protected at home and on the go. If you're keeping score, that's internet that does it all. That's unbeatable internet from Xfinity. Learn more at Xfinity.com. Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. Kevin Hart's Reality Check Tour is coming to Chase Center on October 1st. And 95.7 The Game has your tickets. Listen to Willard and Debs all this week around 1030 for your chance to win. Oh, my God. Now, back to the morning roast with Bonte and Shasky. All right. You know how we love the callers. We love our viewers on YouTube. We love everybody at the Comcast Business Text Line. There's so much going on with the 49ers right now. Let it tell JT O'Sullivan, look, we got a punt today. We want to hear from the fans. Straight up. And lines are lit right now, so we'll get you in just a second. Can I ask you a question? What's up? Florio brought something up that was actually very interesting. He brought up a lot of things that was very interesting. Is Kyle Shanahan's offense outdated? Mm. 
because I'm listening to McDaniels and I'm watching. And again, it's one week. I'm not trying to overcompensate here. but Whoa. And you hear this from Kansas City and Buffalo. As much as it's about X's and O's, you also have to let the you athletes be athletes. You have to evolve. And there's an artistry involved in this. And now, I think that there's a, a happy medium between the two. But to be so rigid, so well, rigid in how you play... I do think there's something there. I'm not saying it's outdated. Well, said, I'm I, not no, ready to go that I, I, far. I asked you that between the break. Full I do disclosure. think there needs to be some wrinkles. Full, full disclosure, private show. Shaska's like, man, Florio said a lot. I said, the one thing that's also sticking out is his offense and how he looked at Mahomes and Brady, yeah. and he has it adjusted. And we watched that offense on Sunday. I heard Damon Bruce on Monday. This offense looks boring. You know what, Damon? You are not lying. Now, it wins, <laughs> but it's a ground and pound, and it's something different for us West Coast fans. Yeah. It's something different for 49er fans. Even though they had a lot of battles with Montana, Steve Young, and Jeff Garcia, they still threw that ball down the field. It was explosive. We haven't saw that explosiveness from this offense in quite some time. Debo's made things happen, but they're all basic well, bubble screens, uh, smoke screens. You know what I'm saying? You look at McVay. They've evolved over the time. I mean, look at Zach Taylor, who's a Shanahan evolved. disciple. They've got three receivers, and now they've look lost both their McDaniel's games. Daniels offense with the Oops. Miami Dolphins so far. It's incredible. They're throwing bombs. They're doing everything. Run to the Ford uh, Explorer and hang a left, Tyreek. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's a great question. We'll see this off in Sunday against the Denver Broncos. Well, that's what when we were Is doing it going to evolve? When we were doing our preseason stuff and we were talking about, you know, is this wide receiver going to get 1,000 yards? Is this wide receiver? And I, I was like, me and you were talking about this. I'm like, the chances of a Niner receiver getting the opportunities to get 1,000 yards well, is few and far between. The chances of two of them? Very surprising. Yeah, Three? Happening. It's never going to happen. It's not happening. By the way, coming up at 6 p.m., 95.7 The Game, an Odyssey presents... I'm listening. A two-hour special bringing awareness to mental health. You'll hear from some of the biggest names in music and sports, as well as featured interviews with Drew Robinson, the baseball player in the Giants organization, whose story is incredible, pow incredibly powerful, and former Heisman Trophy winner Ricky Williams. You know his story. I'm listening. Coming up at 6 p.m. right here on 95.7 The Game, hosted by the one and, and only Mark Willard. Let's get to the line. Yeah, yeah and, and there's Let's something there with the GM and the head coach. Somebody, if this goes sideways, this is this has got ugly. I think this is. I'm, 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 I want to win. Just fast forwarding into year seven, we still don't know who the quarterback is. <sighs> and the fact that Shanahan gotta win this has week. the final decision making, has the final say, and yet he didn't want Trey Lance, and yet he didn't want. Now these are all rumors. I don't know what to believe. Just, but if this, if that's, if you really didn't want Trey Lance, and Steiny's been on this. Steiny's been said. I give Matt Steinman a lot of credit here. He said they moved up I, for wait, the spot. I, wait, I, I just, I want to pause. You are giving Steinmetz credit on a football hey, take. Continue. I gotta, I, Just I continue. Go. I, no, I can't believe it. I think this I is important. Believe it. I can't believe no, it. No, but I think this but is Steinitz, important. This is up Steinmetz's wheelhouse. I'm glad that you... But, that you, but I listened to this listen. and I had to sit mm -hmm. back. What did he say? Because like, an OG can teach you something. Yeah. And Steinmetz's an OG. I actually thought about Steady during a Tim Donahue uh, oh my God. Uh, that, documentary. Save that for later. Because the referees Scott all come from Pennsylvania. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, Steady, Pennsylvania. His dad was a ref. It makes sense on why he loves referees. <laughs> no, nah, I don't like you, Steady. But no, seriously. He made a great I'm point a about... a nuance. He, he made a great point about... And we'll get to the calls in just a second. He made a great point on how the Niners moved up to number three, not for the player, for the but pick. for just the pick. Which is a little odd. their choice. Yeah. Which is a little odd. And then you go through the process of finding out who the player is. So wait a minute. You mean to me, tell me when you're at BYU's Pro Day, Zach Wilson's throwing the ball around. You move up to number three. No, you're not getting Trevor Lawrence. No, you're not getting Zach Wilson. You mean to tell me that you didn't know who you were going to take? Now, I don't know if I believe that, but that's bad, bad business. That's not how a football team should operate. You move up to number three, you're saying... I'm getting this guy. Yeah. Like the Bears, when they flop, when they flip flop with the Niners in the 2017 NFL draft, they knew they were getting Trubisky. They're getting Trubisky. They that wanted was their him. guy. They highlighted it. Wasn't him. a great pick. But yeah. They wanted Even their guy. The Bears moving up to get Justin Fields. They that was their guy. Fields. They wanted Fields. Uh, Deshaun Watson and Mahomes. Those teams moved up to get those Houston. guys. Uh, Buffalo with Josh Allen. They traded moved three up. times that offseason to, to move up, up to go get Josh to Allen. Seven. To get Josh Allen. Yeah. You mean to tell me the Niners moved up to number three? Sidings are all over it. I got to give them credit. Credit when credit's due. Number three overall pick, and you don't know what player you're taking? I don't know if I buy that, but I don't know I, if, but I buy but it, if it. that's true. And then, oh, Trey Lance is wrong. Now you think about all the reports, all oh, arm fatigue. Oh, the coaching staff is not happy with where Trey's at. But that's an indictment on you guys. You took him number three overall and traded three picks for him. I know you're going to go to the lines in a second. Yeah. And this is a point that I do want to highlight from the 415. I'll be boring. 
If we're winning. We're watching every game. And I agree with that. We're watching every game. I'll be as boring as need be as long as you can win. We're watching every game. But when game. you don't win and you only score 17 points in an NFC Championship game and you look up and you're like, God, if we just had a couple more explosive plays, it's fair to say it's kind of holding you back a little. You score 20 against the Kansas City Chiefs and their weakness and we were that season was a me, defense. Don't. I don't want to talk about That was their weakness. I don't want to talk about the Super Bowl. 20 points. It, it's, I don't, it's like when I see Flacco still throwing passes. I hate Flacco. Mile high miracle. So much. You know why, you know why I hate Flacco? Like all I think of is him and Bolden connecting on every third listen, down. Listen, it's Jacoby Jones. Oh, don't, deep don't, down the field. Don't. Joe Flacco bounced me from the survivor pool this week. I don't care. Forget Flacco. Uh, Will and Marie, what's He's happening? Elite. He's listening. He's listening on his car radio. What's up, Will? What's happening? You're on the roast. What's up, Will? Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for taking my call. Always, I really appreciate it. But I'm gonna say this: I do think Shanahan should be on a hot seat. I'm not gonna blame him for the injury because you yourself, when you go out on a football field and there's 250 pound plus men running sub four sevens, you're putting yourself in a position for to get sure. hurt. Trey Lance wanted to play football; he got hurt. But when you're dubbed a quarterback whisperer, uh, an offensive wizard, uh, this and that, you're, and you're unaccomplished and you're right. not doing anything, guess yep. what? Any Friesinger is not gonna let. You and Shafty come on in and smoke weed and talk about whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> I'm, not allowed, I'm not allowed to come over to my job and do whatever I want and just brush off my good customers and not go do my stuff. Right. I'd get the boot. So if you're seven, it should be a serious consideration. You know what they should do? Here's my hot take. Go get Sean Payton. Get him. He's chilling. Well, get a real coach that's going to have the people playing. He knows how to run. He knows how to develop a quarterback. And he can play with an elite defense. Everything that, that the Niners have. Wow. I think that'd be a great So team. So... The Sean Payton thing's interesting because Jed York did flirt with Sean Payton years ago. Yeah. Remember when I... Oh, yeah. And by the way... Yeah. And who, I know you hate Sean Payton. Do you know who Sean Payton is represented by? Don Yee. <laughs> Don One Yee, of his baby. three agents. Don Yee, baby. Hey, y'all can talk all you want about Don Yee. He gets his clients paid. Paid. P-A-I-D. Caps lock. Paid. Paid in full? <laughs> Randy and Silly Renzo. Ace hey, Boogie, baby. That's so my guy. Sick. Uh, Randy, what's happening? You're on the road. Listening on this car radio. What's up, Randy? Hey, good morning. So, um, do you feel that if the Niners still had Jim Harbaugh, that Harbaugh would have agreed with uh, the Trey Lance pick? And hmm. if so, do you think that Harbaugh would have developed? Uh, Lance properly? You know, it's a very interesting question that I don't know I have an answer for because Alex looked great with Harbaugh in the limited, you know, year and a half. Yeah. Kaepernick started off great, but, but him and Greg Roman really didn't take it to the next level. I well, thought they regressed. Well, you know what, though? When Shen when Harbaugh drafted... But he empowered Colin both Ka players. He did. He drafted Colin Kaepernick in the second round. You know what he told his dad? I believe Kaepernick's the best quarterback in this draft, and I'm taking him in the second round. And he did. And there was a rumor that Al Davis and Hugh Jackson was in on Kaepernick, too. Yeah. And Harbaugh got Kaepernick. And you know who told me? I, this is the first ever fan fest I covered. It was at Candlestick Park. About 10,000 fans there. Nobody cared because they thought the night was going to stink, right? Yeah. A young Grant Cone. Oh. Believe it or not. On the sidelines. Because, you know, and I just happened to be talking to him. I didn't even know who he was at the time. Yeah. He didn't know who I was. No YouTube like, channel at that no time. No YouTube channel. No nothing. He goes... You know, Harbaugh's been around Kaepernick a lot during training camp. He's always around him. He's always coaching him up. That's interesting. I was like, huh, that's odd. Well, he's around the rookie, not Alex Smith and or whatnot. He filed that back away. Filed it back away. And then Kaepernick took the job next next season. I'll, now, I'll say this. Um, Kaepernick had the three years of starting at Nevada. And yep. they, inc they implemented the exact same yep. pistol offense yep. from, what was the guy's name from Nevada? Uh, Chris Alt, I they, believe. Chris Alt. Yeah, they they the brought him yep. in to teach them that particular thing so that they could run plays that he felt familiar with. So, look, uh, the, here's the problem with any of the hardball questions. He was really bad at the end when it came to dealing with management, and that's a part of the job. But in terms of making the most out of each player, I think he did a pretty damn good job at that. No doubt. And, and I, as much as I get frustrated with Greg Roman, he's doing some great things with Lamar Jackson. Great things. Lamar looks like he can throw the ball from the pocket, too. I will still way. forever be furious that, that <laughs> Greg Roman didn't hand the ball off yeah, to Frank Gore I mean, well, at first Frank and goal. Frank Gore, he didn't play on first and goal. Remember, he had a 45-yard he run. He, had, he, he needed a breather. Uh, by the way, shout out to Jason. Out there on vacation in Paris, France. Oh, nice. Still listening to the roast. It's 3 o'clock out oui, there in oui. Paris. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Go out there. Head, go to the Louvre, baby. Great, great, great museum. Uh, let's see. Uh, Shock. Uh, our boy Shock is calling. What's up, Shaka? From Berkeley. What's up, Shaka? What's up, man? What's going on, man? Hey, happy birthday, man. Happy belated, man. I ain't talked to you in a while, man. Thank you, Shaka. I appreciate it. That. 
appreciate it. Hey, man. I first I want to, you know, my boy got with me, so he got with Let me, let me, let me, let me say that first. <laughs> it's Vikings fan. I want to say something about the other team, too, man. Jalen and Hurst looking real good, man. Uh, no doubt. That boy was looking good, man. He was dope. Hey, man, I want to talk about Mike Flores, a big-time Vikings fan. I know y'all probably don't know that. You know, you see that Kirk Cousins in there on the interview, man. I like the interview you did, man. You do them real well, man. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Well, it's, want, Shasky, it's a team want, effort. He carries the interviews. I do. Both of y'all, bro, you're real professional, man. I, I like y'all, y'all interviews, man. Keep it going, man. Thank I you. wanna when Damon Bruce says, I just wanna say something with some real giant fans, my giant brethren. Damon Bruce said that the Dodgers winning seven is more worth than Giants three championships. He needs to be drug tested <laughs> if he believes that. <laughs> Seven division titles do, do not equate to three world championships. <laughs> three different parades. Shaka, what so, you got on the Niners? Yeah, Shaka, you, you ain't talking no you baseball, Shaka. You took a Shaka. left turn on yeah. me. <laughs> hey, 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 but look, this is what I do got on the Niners, man. The man is doing quarterback sneak. I, I said on this air, those plays he were running were, 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 were no good. He re Basically, they were no good. They probably want to play. That's what I said, man. <laughs> and the week later, the man gets hurt. No but doubt. The, the, the third pick, the third pick, he was the third pick, right? Yep. The other third pick, nobody never talks about it. The, 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 the draft, the defensive end, the defensive tackle, is no longer with the team either. Solomon Thomas, so yeah, no doubt. Pick those picks, man. No well, doubt. Well, and even like the Kinlaw pick. So, like, it, you and I can disagree on this, right. but. I believe when you're drafting in the first round, it's about right. value. No doubt. And when I look at the way they use their defensive line throughout the tenure of Kyle Shanahan, if you're going to rotate the defensive lineman, if you're not an edge rusher, right. why would I sink $20 million guaranteed into Eric Armstead? Why yeah. would I sink a first-round pick, 13th well, overall, when all of these playmakers are on the board, when a center is on the board that you right. needed a center, Ruiz? Tristan Wirfs. Tristan Wirfs is available. Right tackle. There were guys with Justin Jefferson. Well, there were guys available, and it just to me, taking a D tackle didn't make a lot of sense. Well, so forget uh, the quarterback. Yeah. I, I've differed with them philosophically on their drafts for a yeah. variety of reasons. So the Kenlaw thing, because we did the draft show, and you were out on Kenlaw. I'm in on Kenlaw. I think Kenlaw could be a real good player. What didn't make sense to me was, wait a minute, you traded Buckner? Because I heard from people from the 49ers who was working with the 49ers at the time. They said, this is devastating. On and off the field. He's a leader in that locker room. But Buckner had been the better player, and everybody said, well, he can't play in the wide. No, he can't play in the wide. Well, that Buckner's a baller. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. a baller. He'll play in any scheme. Any scheme. You traded Buckner to go draft another D tackle, but then you gave Armstead all the money who had been inconsistent at that point. And by the way, Eric Armstead, through two weeks, maybe I need to watch more film. Maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah, but twenty million dollars when you're not Aaron Donald in the middle of a defensive line. Like there's three guys. It's not good business. There's three guys. Buckner's one of them. And then you got Fletcher Cox and you yep. got Aaron Donald. Yep. Outside of that, I'm not paying twenty million dollars for rotational defensive linemen. Maybe Cam Hayward think, inside. Okay, but think about like they get good production out of Givens. They yeah. let DJ Jones go. Yep. They have been able to find no guys late no in doubt. that draft who could be a rotational yep. interior D lineman. Yep. So to me, that's that's a way. This goes back to value, and so they've done the same thing in the second round. They they reached and they took Dante Pettis. Okay, that was bad. Okay, they yep. took a wide receiver in the third round who got hurt, Jalen Hurts, and then hung on to him forever, and everyone knew he was hurt. <laughs> they did a cut. fourth round running back, a third round running back, a Trace third Sermon. round running back. Yeah. Like we could go right down the list. Right. Like and and again, I'm not saying that you don't get credit for finding other picks. Hufanga, Hufanga looks fantastic, George yep. Kittle, but these premium picks you got to hit at a higher you gotta rate. Hit. At you a gotta higher hit. rate. Not, not, you, you're going to miss some, but you got to hit at a higher rate. But and it, it feels like at some point it's going to catch up with them. At some point it's going to catch up with them. Cuz now you're looking at the next Agreed. offseason year Florio Jimmy's probably not coming back. It did in Harbaugh and Trent Baalke. It did. And you know, when they yep. couldn't replenish the stock the and they AJ started paying Jenkins, all these top-end yeah, guys, it, James, it really yep. hurt them. And then Borland retiring. I mean, he was a replacement for Bowman. They made the Alex Bowman. Smith trade during the Harbaugh era. Okay, they made the Alex Smith trade. And it turned into Corey Lemonye and, and Carlos Hyde and a bunch of nothing. Was it Tate Carradine? Yeah, Tate Carradine. Carradine. Yeah, Tate Carradine. He had a little cup of tea right. with the Raiders. No doubt. Uh, let's go to Jeff He's, in California. He's, by the way, all-time defensive lineman name. Tank Carradine's Tank Carradine at the was top. Sick. Florida State, but it, I watched a lot of Florida State, and I was like, He was damn. garbage. And, and 408, Comcast was like, don't forget Buckner cried in his locker when he got the news that they were trading him. Damn. 
That was in that, the middle of COVID. He was in his locker. It was middle of COVID. Yeah, I don't know if he was out of his locker, but I do remember but hearing they, I, it, that happened in the offseason. That was with BSG. That was BSG. And, and their argument would have been, well, Joe, they got to keep uh, Eric Armstead and Jimmy Ward, and I would say, look. Uh, paying Eric Armstead edge rusher money after that one year was probably a poor decision. Again, another Has he example. Up to that potential? Another example, Joe. Why don't we use the franchise tag? The guy had one great year on the edge, and I'm not saying he's not a good right. football player. He is a good football player. But you could use a, a franchise that kept Buckner. Why not keep your defensive line together? And make and, and Arkansas first. You had a whole other year before you had to really pay Buckner. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Let's go to Jeff in California watching on YouTube. What's up, Jeff? Good morning, guys. How you doing? What's good, up? Good. Hey, hey, I just wanted to touch on a couple of things real quick. Um, I was heartbroken about what happened to Lance. You know, I was really excited. I think he worked really, really hard in the offseason to, to come out there and show us what he's got. He didn't get the opportunity. But with that being said, I, I'm an optimist, man. I got to look at the bright side of everything. And uh, our defense is playing well. So I don't know who is killing it. Right. Um, we're going to get Jimmy Ward back. We're I think everybody forgot, too, we're going to give a red back. And has Jimmy ever had more motivation to There's, play well than now? Hey, hey, Jeff, you're spot on. And that's why, in my head, I'm saying, you know what? It's go time. Because a lot of the conversation last week, Jeff, from Mike Mercer Lombardi, you got a Super Bowl roster, but you're waiting it. You're wasting it on developing Trey. That was a conversation. I don't believe that, but that was a conversation. Okay, now you got Jimmy back in the saddle. What does that mean? You know what it means to me, Shasky? They better go out there and win some damn games. But there's an uh, agreed long term. But there's an acclimation period where he's got to ramp himself up. That's all I'm saying. Like I just to me to to instantly snap to the other side you of the room. You don't have time to do I that. I know, but I you don't, don't think have that's time. Fair. I personally you don't have time. Denver, the Rams, Chargers, Falcons, Panthers. They things heat up when you got to play the Tampa Bay Bucks and the Saints and the Dolphins. Just don't get any easier. That Cardinals are bringing, bringing back Hopkins. That's not an easy game. It's only going to get harder. I know. I don't have time to wait. I know. I know. They don't have time to wait. But it, the one thing that I'm trying to learn. We're not going to wait for Trey Lance. I'm, I'm trying to be patient. Yeah. I tried to extend patience for Trey. Yeah. But so you I need know, to extend a little you know bit what, of patience Shasky? for Jimmy. People are already ready to bench Trey Lance. Well, if they go one and three, you got to bring in Jimmy to save the season. If he goes two and five, people are ready to bench him after week one. I, week one. I, I know. I know. Patience is out the window. It's out the window. <sighs> Let's go to uh, Martin in Pacifica. Martin, what's I feel happening? I like I'm on the raft all alone. <laughs> no, you're not. Going you're down not. the river. You're not. I'm there with you, but Up you know current, what? No paddle. Can't do it. Martin, Pacifica, listening on the radio. Transistor radio. What's up, Martin? Hey, what's up going on, guys? Hey, first time caller. I love the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what I was saying is, you know how you guys are always saying, Shanahan, go get your guy. You've got, yep. you got your choice. Go I've get him. I've been saying that all the time. Yep. I, I think they moved up. So Shanahan could create his guy. I think mm. they saw potential. Mm. This young, athletic kid with a lot of potential, but unidentified. You know, um, sky's the limit. Let me ask you, Martin, real quick. Let me ask you, Martin. Was that the right move to try to create a guy instead of getting a guy? Um, not for that draft. Not not for all those picks. Definitely, I don't think so. Well, and then the other the other part good is... Call, Martin. Call good, us back, good man. Call. Good stuff. Like, I trusted him to create a guy. Maybe I give him too much credit. I don't know. And, uh, and it's still to be seen. Like, B, if we're going to make the most optimistic yeah. point of view on Trey Lance, right? Yep. Part of what made Steph... And again, Steph is such a unicorn. Yep. I don't want to do this to the kid. But part of what made Steph so incredible and so great was he signed a $44 million four-year deal because of some ankle injuries. Now, if you wanted to be an optimist and you'd say, you know what? He's still 22. He's really young. Yeah. Maybe he can come back, suppress I, his salary I still a little. Feel like like that. there's there's there is that path that feels very pie in the sky today because he's laid up with a broken right. ankle. I still have a lot of hopes for Trey Lance. But it's true. The injuries are starting to pile up. And now in my no, that, head, I'm that's, like, that's undeniable. Damn, can he stay healthy? It's undeniable. I know the arm talent's there. But can he stay healthy now? I, I, and now we're going to year three, and we don't even know if he can deliver the ball from the pocket consistently. And we then, don't know. And what team is he going to be coming back to? <laughs> you know, where are question. they at with Jimmy? Right. Where is he at? Where Where's are they George at in Kittle the records? At? Yeah, I, Where's Debo at? Where's the coach at? Where's Trent Williams at? That's a great – is D'Amico on his <laughs> way out the door? Man, that's a good point, too. Right? Maybe, man, you may not want him leaving out the door. Uh, consultant in Walnut Creek. Consultant, what's happening? Then we'll get the Doug, Danker, and Bay Rob. First consultant in Walnut Creek listening on the radio. What's up, consultant? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, look, it's uh, dark and dreary outside, so I'm going to bring a little sunlight on this. Yeah. You know, good sports talk radio. 
I, I'm going to take the other side of this, um, and I'm going to say, look, well, let, let me acknowledge that you guys aren't saying to fire. No, uh, yeah, no, no. And so, not saying that. Yeah, that. That's awesome. So that so we're we're all good there. Just for the sake of argument, though, right? I think when I take a look at what's happened in aggregate over the last six years of of Shanahan being here, and this is his sixth year. The first year, write it off. He, he yeah, overtook for sure. the yep. worst yep. rosters in the league. Mm-hmm. And Agreed. Made it, and we were a joke. And the four years since, because this is six year now, in the two years he's been healthy, we were, we're going to the Super Bowl, we went to the Super Bowl, right? Those are good years. Now, when I take a look at the, the move up to get Trey, I think when I look at back in, in, in history, I think it was the right move. And why not? Look, at the end of the day, you got a gift. That you got everybody injured. Everybody was injured. Agreed. Was injured team in history, mm-hmm. I think. And they went in there like, look, we're not going to get a, a chance like this again. We've still got the roster. We know that there's five amazing quarterbacks on the board. Two are probably going to be gone. We know number one. We're not quite sure who number two is. But of the three that are going to be remaining, we think one of those guys could be our guy. And what have we got to lose if he bets on himself? Those, those two picks that he's giving up to get that third, those might be late first round, early. No, well, no they, round already they already were. They already were. Twenty nine and let's overall. Take, and let's take the risk. Yeah. So we get Trey Lance, and at the end of the day, I think we are all on the same page. You, I mean, at least I was. Hey, rest. You got to give the guy a year to develop. Exactly. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo, bring mm-hmm. him in year two. Mm-hmm. We were a game. We were five quarters in. Unfortunately, he got injured. We don't know. He might think that yeah. Trey's the guy. But his entire plan got derailed because of injuries, which seems to which be is happening. totally no, fair. No doubt. Thanks for the call, think, consultant. See, see, I, the more yep. I've been thinking about this, and I think he was going to evolve the playbook as the year went on. I think early yep. on was probably going to be run heavy stuff, and then eventually they were going to slowly open it up thought, after they calculate a couple. I wins. thought this team could make the playoffs, and by the playoffs, they were going to start to peak. I didn't need them to be the Buffalo Bills in week one. Agreed. I need them to beat the well, Buffalo Bills Ari- in February. That's what Arizona's you know what been the saying? last two years. Right. And I, they've blown they their wad. They've early and blown exactly. their wad. Exactly. Now, I think the opposite could happen for them. Let's get to all these calls. 30 seconds or less. 30, 30 seconds right or less. Tat, tat, right tat, tat, Doug at Berkeley. 30 what seconds up, or less. Listen to the car TC radio. Doug at Berkeley. What's happening? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking the call. I'll be quick. Um, I, 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 Shanahan's a good coach, but I don't think he really knows how to uh, you know, develop a quarterback mm-hmm. from Montana to Mahomes. Those are quarterbacks who could evade the rush. They were not running quarterbacks. Halfbacks don't last long in this league. Thank you. Know, you. Quarterback into a halfback is, is a losing proposition. Final thing I'll say is I always found it curious last year when everybody was calling, clamoring for a trade to start, that Shanahan, you could count how many times he said, Jimmy Garoppolo gives us our best chance to win. Jimmy Garoppolo gives us the best chance to win. It's curious to me that he said that that many times last hmm. week. Those are my thoughts. Thanks. Interesting. Thanks for the call. Let's There's a lot the... of things I wonder. Yeah, they, 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 we'll get when to it, it tomorrow. To them. Danker in San Francisco, 30 seconds or less up, on Dan- YouTube. Danker, what's happening? What's up, boys? Real quick, uh, two things real quick. I think Shanahan's guy isn't a quarterback. He needs a bell cow running back. And you look at Terrell Davis with Elway. Yeah. So Elway could win until that system got the running back. And then, so I think, you know, get Derrick Henry at all, all costs. And then looking at, I mean, I think the biggest fumble in any NFL management in all NFL history is not signing a Hall of Fame quarterback to his own backyard. I mean, and yeah. And Brock Rate mean, needs to be on the chopping block as well as some, or potentially if right. we're going to start throwing names out there. Because Buckner is also part of that. No doubt. Taken by him. Good and call, Decker. Good call, Digger. We got to run real quick. Bay Rob, Bay Rob, 30 seconds or less, and then we'll get the polo to end the show. Bay Rob, in the Bay on the radio. What's What's happening, Bay Rob? What's up, fellas? Yeah, just like he said, I'm going to piggyback on Danker. What quarterback have this dude developed in the first place? Then you get rid of Buckner. You didn't even give Buckner a chance, bro. You didn't even go rap with him and say, hey, what you do is you willing to do this, willing to do this. You give up the best for for, for, for something that we don't even know about. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? I just feel bad for Trey because yeah. Trey wasn't ready. And we didn't even have to reach and go give up them picks like that to get Trey. Because I don't think nobody was really eyeballing Trey like Oof. that anyway. Maybe Atlanta. We Maybe don't know. Maybe Atlanta. I don't know. Maybe Atlanta, It's Bay easy Rob. to play that game Maybe. now. Maybe. I, look, in real time, I will still defend yep. them. They went bold, and I appreciated them right. going bold. All right, that's it for us. Polo, call us back tomorrow. I'm a believer Thanks in Thanks for all bold. the calls, man. This was a fun 
fun show. Um, tomorrow we'll start to turn the page and look at the Denver Broncos and what's going on with the Broncos. They're a one one team with a rookie head coach. It's like the never ending story. Touchdowns. You know, when she's reading the book, yeah. and, or is it a boy? I can't remember. Yeah, I Got the know. little candle. You, you remember never ending story? It's been a Falcor? while. Falcor? It's, it's oh been a while. God. Was that? It's been a while. That, that Look thing, at you. It's, it's been a while. Trey was for the to start that movie. It's the never oh ending God. story. Yeah. Exactly. I just love, remember those dudes that were like plugged into the side of the mountain and they're yes. just like, oh. 